Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well. I'm excited to announce that I will be hosting a new interactive masterclass. The future of education is in crisis. This masterclass takes place this Friday, November 27th at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So please be sure to register here. Now, my mission is to transform education. And during this open house, you will learn about the problems with our current education system, as well as the constantly evolving solutions that are available and what you can do right now to best prepare yourself for the future that you desire. Now, if you've ever heard me talk about the Harun Education Ventures MBA degree program and wondered what it would be like to be one of my students, then I invite you to join me on Friday, November 27th at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for this special live event interactive masterclass. Now, everybody attending will receive a free course of mine that I just released about finance and how to save a fortune. It's easy to do. Just for showing up, you're gonna get some of my best stuff. Additionally, I will be giving away one scholarship for gold, one scholarship for platinum of my MBA degree program, and a one-on-one -on -one call with me where I can help you with anything related to getting a job, starting a business, getting promoted, and a lot more. You will experience the learning, the interaction, and most importantly, the fun. I guarantee you that this signature talk will be edutaining, meaning educational and entertaining. None of your questions will go unanswered, and I promise you will walk away with plenty of practical value that you can put to use right away. Trust me, you don't want to miss this awesome event, and I can't wait to see you there. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to our weekly webcast. If this is the first time you're joining us, welcome. If you've been with us before, welcome back. And so the way the call works is this is a three hour long AMA, kind of like on Reddit. AMA stands for Ask Me Anything. You can ask me business questions. You can ask me uh, career questions, personal questions, anything you want. And within 24 hours of this call being completed, what my staff does is they update the description field of this YouTube video. So you can get immediate access by clicking on any question that was asked at any time so I can save you time as well. So without further ado, let's begin and thank you. Uh, and you'll notice here beside me, uh, I've got this uh, this poster here. It's actually uh, one of my monitors uh, and it's regarding a, a free class that's coming up uh, on uh, November 27th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. And this is a, a master class. That's what we called it. My marketing team has called it. Uh, during this class, you'll get a good understanding uh, of, of what my MBA degree program is all about. Uh, I'm, I'm also going to give you some of my best stuff, uh, meaning a free brand new course for you just for attending. And I'll be giving away a couple of uh, scholarships as well. And so if you want to sign up for this, uh, please register today at harunmba.com slash masterclass. That's all lowercase. And let me go there with you. So it's right here. So you go to uh, harunmba.com slash master class. And then you can reserve your spot and register right, right here. Um, and you'll learn all about uh, my MBA degree program. You'll get a free course and much, much more and a bunch of scholarships and prizes. Everybody gets something. So check it out. And if you have questions, as always, please let me know and thank you. Okay, let me get to questions now. All right, so our first question here, give me one second, is uh, from Hari, who's saying uh, a warm good morning, Chris. Same to you, how are you? Uh, and Osama is asking, uh, hi, Chris, hope all is well, likewise. I signed up for your MBA degree, uh, gold uh, version of the program. Looking forward to starting. Thank you for these sessions and for the content you provide. Um, my, my pleasure, Osama. I'm very, very happy to have you with us. And for those of you not familiar what, with what Osama is talking about, um, if you go to Haroon MBA, I've got uh, a couple of uh, MBA degree programs that are starting uh, this uh, this December on December 14th. Let me scroll down to get more details for you. You can learn more about this program by going to harunmba.com. 
Um, there's a 30 day, 100% money back guarantee that start that, that you get up until 30 days after we start. So what that means is if you purchase the program today, um, it, we start December 14th. And so you've got up until January 14th of 2021 to get 100% of your money back. Uh, it's a great deal. I put my reputation on the line. Uh, and if you don't like it, you get your money back, you got nothing to lose. So in terms of what this degree program is all about, um, it's a lot cheaper than other MBA degree programs, of course. Um, also, in the platinum version of the program, I'll personally write your entire LinkedIn profile for you. Um, there's 500 hours uh, all in, including uh, the, the lessons uh, and the Q&A and much, much more. And so you can go here and read about testimonials, etc. Now, there's five main tracks uh, in the MBA degree program as follows. And you can click here to get sample lectures here at harunmba.com. The first of five tracks in the core courses uh, are is finance and, and accounting. Uh, I teach you everything you need to know uh, about finance uh, and accounting uh, to be successful in business based on my experience um, working at Goldman Sachs uh, on Wall Street, uh, some of the top hedge funds in the world, starting my own hedge fund and my own venture capital firm, uh, sitting on boards, starting lots of companies, etc. In my MBA at Columbia University, where I majored in finance. Also, we have entrepreneurship, uh, and in this track, uh, and again, there's five uh, main tracks, and and these are all required courses, and there will be some electives too. In the entrepreneurship track, I'll teach you how to start a company. We'll analyze the best entrepreneurs in history and, and see what made them very, very successful so that we can make uh, your turn your idols uh, into your into your rivals. Do a sound check here, good, okay. Um, I'll teach you um, how to, uh, there's actually a venture capital boot camp as well uh, that takes place uh, during the third semester. Now there's four semesters. During the third semester, I put you through uh, a venture capital boot camp. I've been involved with venture capital boot camps in the past, some of the most sophisticated VC firms, you've heard of plenty of them as well. And then um, after entrepreneurship, uh, we have personal growth. And personal growth, I teach you how to accomplish way, 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 way more every single day. I teach you great uh, business-based uh, time management skills you'll love. Uh, and um, also, I'll, I'll help you create the most amazing resume and LinkedIn profile ever. Uh, I'll teach you how to interview. Business schools don't teach you this stuff. And I'll teach you how to present like a rock star. Sales, marketing, communication is the third of five uh, different uh, tracks. Uh, and here I'll teach you um, social media marketing. Um, I'll teach you how, how to sell, um, how to market your product, how to write great business uh, communications as well, and much, much more. Economics management and strategy. This is a fun one. I call it EMS, economics management strategy. Here we'll learn how, how the world works. Um, and um, I'll teach you about fiscal policy, monetary policy, how governments work from a business perspective, and much, much more. Uh, I've also worked in the consulting industry, so I'll teach you all about consulting as, as well. And I'll provide you with just a ton of frameworks so that you can uh, address business problems and take your career to the next level. Um, and we have a, a lot more. Um, and by the way, if you want to understand the program and you want to do your own due diligence um, and not listen just to, to me, um, and just be intellectually honest about the whole process. Then go to LinkedIn and find people that have taken the program. We have 140 alumni uh, on, on LinkedIn. Find them, talk to them, ask them about the negatives first, uh, and then maybe the positives as well. Yeah, I put my reputation online. And I've got just a ton of testimonials as well. Uh, you get a bunch of free books, all that stuff. So the way it works is there's, there's two different versions. And, and again, we start on December the 14th. The first version um, is the gold, and the second version is platinum. Now, both classes take place at the same time. Let me explain how it works. So there's I teach live on Mondays and Tuesdays in two different time zones. Time zone one starts at 9 a.m. on Mondays and Tuesdays, and class ends at noon plus hours of Q&A if there's demand. Then time zone two is also on Monday and Tuesdays, also Pacific time, starting at 4 p.m. until 7 p.m. plus endless Q&A if there's demand, and there usually is. Um, and the difference between the two is that this version here, um, I also provide you with several hours of one-on-one -on -one coaching. 
um, so that I can help you interview better, write a better business plan. Uh, and I actually write your LinkedIn profile myself while we do these one-on-ones, if that's what you want to do. They're one-on-one confidential meetings as well. And so to learn more, go to harunmba.com, scroll down and register today. And if you have additional questions, as, as always, please let me know. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, ne- next up, uh, Usama is saying, Habibi, <laughs> you made me laugh the other day. Uh, and then you said, uh, will, will you, will, I'll teach you a few Arabic words uh, in the near future. Thank you. I, I, I need it. I need it. Uh, and my, uh, my mom and dad called me Habibi as well growing up. And so my, my, um, in terms of my background from Canada originally, uh, but my um, uh, my dad is from from Egypt. He immigrated in 1967 from a, a, a small town called Soheg, a couple hours south of, of Cairo. I don't speak the language, uh, but I do know some words um, because my dad every Sunday would call Egypt uh, and and all that stuff. And my mom is um, half Lebanese uh, and the other half is Scottish, Irish. I think a little bit of French in us too. Uh, I'm proud proud Canadian, proud citizen of the world. Uh, it's only I know a couple of words only. Uh, like uh, Yawalet, which my dad said to me a lot, or Habibi as well. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, ne- next up, um, uh, Pratik is saying, hey, sir, I hope you are fine. I'm excited uh, for the session on the 27th of November, and, and so am I, and I, and I hope you can all, all join us as well. Thank you. Um, uh, and then uh, uh, Noel is saying, will the webcast uh, be held one hour late uh, from now on? Uh, no, no, no. It's still um, the, the weekly webcast uh, every Thursday forever. And I think this is week 112 or 113. Uh, it starts at 8 a.m. Uh, uh, San Francisco time. And maybe you're in, in a part of the world where there's no uh, daylight saving. So I apologize if, if that's what happens. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then uh, Noel is saying an earlier webcast of yours started an hour earlier Indian time. Yeah, yeah. It's because of daylight savings. Uh, Usama is saying, um, uh, one more question. Sure. The course that starts on December 14th, meaning the MBA degree program, yeah. Are there any sessions related to the course prior to that date um, uh, other than uh, the sessions uh, and your other video content? No, there's there's actually nothing. There's um, And you don't have to prepare as well. Just, just, just show up. It'll be a lot of fun. It'll be a lot of fun. You'll love it. Uh, but if you want, what you can do is um, you can go to my, my website, which is, um, and then just reach out to other people that have taken the, the program, haroonventures.com. And then, and then when, when you're here, you go to uh, my MBA degree program here, student testimonials. Uh, and if you want, um, you can actually contact any of my students. There's a ton of them have written testimonials. Um, reach out to the ones that have not, if you want to as well, over, over LinkedIn. Um, so, um, Akil's based in India, uh, Jim is in uh, Connecticut here in the United States, actually he just moved to Maine. Uh, I've got Stella and Sol, a uh, Vital, who's from Rwanda, lives in Stuttgart now, Germany. Um, and we got uh, Yoshida-san in, in Tokyo, uh, Eric in the Netherlands. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, Asan in Pakistan, uh, Jason, uh, who's in Florida, was, was moving this week actually to, back to Australia. Uh, just a ton of people from all over the world. Doris, she's wonderful. Uh, Lamarck, who's just moved back to the Philippines, to Manila um, uh, from the United States. Um, it, it, the list goes on and on and on. So you can contact any of these people if you want to um, uh, ask them the negatives, the positive, et cetera. And, co- and do your own due diligence too. Go to LinkedIn and find other people that have, that have signed up for the MBA degree program. If, if I go to LinkedIn right now um, and we go to alumni, let me see if I can get this for you here. So if we go here to company Haroon Education Ventures and leave you it as a member here. There are, let's see, alumni, 141 alumni. You, you can search through them, contact them if you want uh, as well. Uh, and, and by all means, if you have questions that aren't answered on my website in the FAQ section, etc., please let me know. And thank you as always. All right. Um, and next up, Pratik is saying, I'm actually writing a book on education and how it could change the future. Uh, could I mention the link of your speech uh, on the future of education in my book? Absolutely. And 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 I, the education is near and dear to my, my heart. I, and, I, and I believe that all problems in the world can be solved by education. And if you want, you can actually even 
uh, copy the whole script uh, and use as much of it as, as you want. And I actually had it closed captioned. And what Pratik is referring to is um, a couple of weeks ago, um, I, I gave one of the keynotes at a very large venture capital event um, where the, uh, the chief learning officer from LinkedIn presented as well as the co-founder of Tesla, et cetera. Uh, and if you want, you, you can watch a replay of that. Just go to my, my YouTube channel. And then when you're on my YouTube channel, just search for the future of education. Um, it should be, here it is right here. Yeah, yeah. The future of education, education right here, right here. Uh, and usually I, I, I do it in, in South America. Um, they, they flew me down last time to Sao Paulo to, to give the speech there. But for obvious reasons, because uh, of COVID, we, we did it online this year. And I made an idiot myself as well. I, I licensed a video from Steve Jobs, um, from uh, John McLaughlin. Uh, and then I, I changed, I went back in time as well, made an absolute idiot myself, but had a lot of fun doing it. That's the doc. And and I almost punctured my eardrum because when I used a, a streamer that got kind of loud, but I, I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, la laugh at me, uh, not not with me as always, yeah. Oh, and the, and the, that speech I just showed you was closed caption. If you want, what you can do is send me a LinkedIn message uh, and I'll send you the entire text uh, which I got rev.com to transcribe. Uh, and you can just copy and paste that into your, um, your, your your book, the entire thing too, if you want. Yeah, we're all in this together. All right, next up is uh, Michael saying, um, uh, hey, Chris, um, uh, salamat pagi, which is a good morning in Indonesian. Thank you, li likewise, likewise. And I, I taught a course actually with um, Sasha Stevenson, who's I think the, the number one uh, uh, internet celebrity or one of the top celebrities uh, in, in Indonesia. She has over 100 million views. Uh, and, and for more details on that course, called the, the Complete YouTube Course. And I met her here on, on this weekly webcast um, a, a while back, actually, in, in our 10th week. But if you're interested, what you can do is go to uh, my website, then go to courses, so haroonventures.com. Uh, and you can learn more about the course here. here here's Sasha, from, and she's Canadian, but lives in Indonesia, uh, and she's wonderful. All right, um, next question is from Michael, which is, why do most uh, master's MBA courses in a lot of universities need, need at least two years of work experience? And does an internship count as work experience? Yeah, I'd say a lot of the traditional MBA schools require more than two years. They require four years. If you look at the, uh, the, the average person that gets accepted to some of these programs, they have an average of four years of work experience. Um, and one of the reasons why traditional business schools like to see that is because they want people to, um, to be able to um, learn from each other in class. Quite often you learn more from the students than you do the, do the teachers. Uh, and I'm very humble to say that my MBA degree program for the first cohort uh, that, uh, that started December 4th of, of 2019 and graduates this December, I'm proud to say that all 158 students uh, are in the platinum program uh, and they're from uh, 41 different countries uh, and they have lots of work experience. Go to my website, then go to the FAQs and you can look and link to 14 uh, LinkedIn profiles of my students uh, that are in my program. They have a lot of work experience and I often feel they learn more from each other than they do from me. Yeah. Uh, and does an internship count as work experience? Um, it, as long as it's more than three months, like if it's a six month to 12 month internship, in that case, I, I guess it would. Yeah. All right, uh, next question is from uh, Aisawi, who's saying, hi, Chris, I uh, hope all is well, likewise. Uh, I would also like to buy property um, for students to rent out. Um, how did you do your research? And you're, you're talking about uh, real estate I bought recently. I bought a building uh, in London, Ontario, not London, England. Uh, London, Ontario is an hour and a half south of, of Toronto. It's where I was born. Um, and I bought a, a building that's right beside the University of Western Ontario. And the reason I did it was I got a good deal. Uh, and also because um, education is somewhat counter cyclical. You know, during recessions, people still go to universities. And so what, I, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm renting out um, five units there uh, to students that go to the University of Western Ontario. Uh, and, and I set it up so that the rent that they pay more than covers the, the mortgage as well that I have on it. Uh, and for any of you looking to, to buy a house, uh, and, and if you think that, you know, it might be kind of hard to pay some of the bills uh, for a house and you want to buy a bigger house and invest more. What I recommend doing is trying to see if you can buy a house uh, or an apartment unit that has a separate door, if possible, 
so you can rent it out for Airbnb. Uh, and um, I did that years ago to the extent that when I put money down to buy the house, um, the Airbnb more than covered the monthly mortgage. So that's one, one way to look at it. Um, uh, now, in terms of your, your your next question on how did you do research before buying that uh, in, in Ontario? Yeah, there, there's a, a good friend of mine named uh, Tom Carazza, who's one of my mentors, um, and he, he's based in Toronto. And he owns a company called um, Rockstar uh, Real Estate. Uh, he does exceptionally well. And so he's helped me out a lot with that as well. Uh, and my, my grandfather, God bless him, he's no longer with us, I love you. Uh, but he used to say, Chrissy, buy land. They're not making it anymore. Uh, and so I, I'm always bullish when it comes to property. Uh, so Tom helped me out with that. Now, in terms of the maintenance uh, on, on this, um, I, I do give away 10 to 15% of the revenue I make on it so that somebody else can take care of all the maintenance. So I don't have to actually fly to Canada uh, to watch over that that place. Yeah, and that's that's slightly high. You, you can get a lower rate as well, uh, but um, I, I got a good deal on the property. Yeah. All right, um, and uh, next up, Kundan is, is, is asking, uh, hey Chris, can you give an overview of what are the total funding rounds of a startup, like seed funding to an IPO, the whole process? Absolutely, yeah. So. The very first time that you raise money, think of it like you're, you're growing um, a plant or a tree. Um, you, you, you get seed financing, a seed, right? And then that seed grows into hopefully a, a, you know, a, a, a mustard tree, et cetera, then you go public. So when you first start off, it's called seed funding, okay? Um, and quite often you get a high net worth investor uh, to invest. Please don't ever get a bank to give you a loan. Okay, when it comes to a company, because uh, if if you have trouble paying back uh, the loan, uh, the bank can take everything. I've seen it happen. It's terrible. And, and banks are chicken. So wh what I recommend doing actually is um, registering your company first. Talk to a lawyer. Um, set it up as an LLC um, or C Corp or S Corp, whatever it might be. I, I have an S Corp. I've done lots of LLCs as well. Talk to a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, that way you're protected just in case something happens. They can't take your, your assets uh, and, and hurt your standard of living. So after you register your company, then what I recommend doing is talking to high net worth investors. Now, let me give you a resource that I, I humbly think will, will help a lot. So um, I, I believe that relationships are more important than product knowledge uh, and that your network is, is your net worth. Uh, and so uh, I have this book you can download uh, from my, my website. Uh, go to haroonventures.com. Uh, and at haroonventures.com, you can download this book for free. It's 200 pages on how to network. And I've raised and managed over a billion dollars in my career. And I share with you a lot of my secrets and tips based on the gazillions of mistakes I've made in my life. Um, and so, again, it's 200, over 200 pages plus several hours of YouTube links. Um, so you can download that from my, my website. And the reason I mention that is because regardless of if, whether or not you want to raise money, uh, or if you want to get a job or you want to get a customer, I think that book will help you out tremendously. And it's free um, because people don't realize quite often in business, I didn't when I was younger, uh, that business is not about what you know. It's about whom you know. You know, relationships are more important than product knowledge. Um, and that book will also help you find mentors as well so you can take your career to the next level. Now, initially when you raise money, I recommend raising money from high net worth investors. And the best way to meet with high net worth worth investors uh, is to network aggressively. And this will t teach you how to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings as well, even over Zoom, that's right. And it's great because most people don't ask, uh, but you will, and that will set you aside from the competition. And so initially, I recommend only talking to high net worth investors that have something in common with you. You know, maybe they're, they're from the same hometown. For me, it's Mississauga, Canada. Maybe they went to the same school as you, which is the Toronto French school for me uh, in Canada. I didn't speak English in school till the, the fifth grade or fourth grade, um, that sort of thing. And find something you have in common with somebody and look for somebody and you can do an advanced search on LinkedIn and I teach you how in that book. But find people that have something in common with you or two things in common with you and reach out to them. And people wanna help you. All you have to do is ask. And your homework today is to go to YouTube and do a search for three words that will change your life. Steve Jobs Ask. Watch that video. It's a minute long. It'll change your perception of business uh, and networking in, in general. 
I like approaching high net worth investors because the sales cycle is short. It can be a couple of weeks or a month or so of meetings. Unlike venture capital firms or big institutions where it can take you months and months and months and many times, and I learned the hard way, dude, when I was raising money for my, my hedge fund years ago, I had meetings all over the world and I flew up to Montreal uh, as part of my road show. And I met with Caisse de Pau, uh, which is the largest pension fund uh, in Quebec, a wonderful firm. And I got a meeting. I was like, oh my God, I'm excited. It's, it's, it's the case. This is incredible. I thought the meeting was going to be a half hour. It lasted over three hours. And at the end of the meeting, um, I asked for the sale, like I always do politely. And they said, well, thank you very much for your time. I enjoyed meeting you, Chris. Um, maybe in five years we'll invest. And so don't approach big institutions because what happens is you have analysts that work at these big funds and they have to take a couple of meetings every day, meaning 700 meetings or so a year. And so you become a checkbox. It's a waste of time. There is a better way. The better way is to network, read my book. It'll help you out tremendously. It's free. I promise you. And if you don't believe me that networking works, I want you to think about this scenario. Okay. Think of yourself 20 years in the future. You're 20 years more successful than you already are today. And a 20 year younger version of you reaches out to you. You know, they, they have the same struggles. They're from the same hometown, same school, etc. And they ask you for a meeting. Would you say yes? Of course you would. The issue is most people don't ask. And it's prophetic. It's been true since the beginning of time. You know, ask and you'll receive. If you want to get anything in life, you have to ask. You know, if you want to get a date, you have to ask. I had to ask 8 billion times. Um, you just got to also uh, put pride aside uh, and know that um, you're going to get a lot of no's and no answers. But eventually you will get yeses. But you have to fail over and over again. Uh, and then you'll succeed, as Michael Jordan says. Uh, and that's what networking is all about. Dating is all about. I should not give dating advice, please. I suck at it. Plus, th this never comes off. <laughs> uh, and by the way, my the MBA degree, it doesn't stand for uh, Master's of Business Administration. It stands for Married But Available. I'm kidding, of course. That's my awful dad humor of the day. No more dad humor today, I promise you. Um, but you got to ask. You have to ask over and over again. And if I told you that if you use my methodology and you asked... 20 people for an informational meeting and only one said yes and you got a job because of that, would you be willing to fail 19 times in a row? Of course you would. By the same token, if I told you if you use my methodologies that I teach and I teach much more in my MBA degree program, if I told you that if you asked 20 people out on a date, 19 would say no and the 20th would say yes and that's your soulmate for life, would you do it? Of course you would. Because as Tony Robbins says, you got to think of everything in terms of pain and pleasure. And for me in finance, I think of it as risk reward. The pain of somebody saying no 19 times to, or 19 different people uh, to a date uh, or as a customer is this, okay? The pleasure of one saying yes is that, right? So the pain is tiny, the pleasure is massive, the risk is small, the reward is high. You got nothing to lose and everything to gain. So I recommend talking to high net worth investors initially. Moving on to the next round of funding. Uh, and so the seed round is, is where you get money initially from a high net worth investor. And the trick is to raise as much money as you can when you can. Uh, because, you know, having worked in VCs, having worked also um, in startups, having started my own companies and having sat on boards, it is the biggest waste of time or time suck, I should say, raising money. It really takes your eye off the ball. Uh, and the traditional model is people, you know, start a company. They get a little bit of cash uh, from a seed investor. Then what they do is every year or two, they'll raise money from venture capital firms. And that whole process of raising money is, oh my God, it, it, it is so distracting, dude. So distracting. And, and it's one of the reasons many people fail in business when they start a company. You know, they might work at a, at a big firm and think, goodness, I'm making, uh, I'm doing well at this company. I'm doing skill X and I'm being underpaid. So I will quit, start my own firm, do skill X and make more. And then you do it and you realize, oh my gosh, I didn't realize it's going to take me this much time to raise money. And that would be such a distraction. 
That's why I say raise as much money as you can when you can. So let's say you, you raise money for, for the seed rant. Then what happens is a year or two later, maybe you run out of money or you want more money for, and the use of proceeds is to build uh, your, your business. Then you might uh, approach institutional investors like venture capital firms. And the first time you raise money from a venture capital firm, that's called the A round. It's just the alphabet, A round, B, C, D, and then eventually IPO. So the first time you raise money is, is called the A round from a big venture capital firm. Then a year or two later, the B round from another venture capital firm and the existing venture capital firm that was already an investor can also invest more if they want to. Then a year or two later, the C round, which is another venture capital firm invests, then the D round, and hopefully IPO at that point. Now, your percent ownership is going to go down materially, of course. And most entrepreneurs, most, um, you know, like Bill Gates, for example, uh, and Steve Jobs, you know, with their firms, by the time it goes public, they own less than 20%, way less than 20%. Yes, you get diluted, but you're worth a lot more. But you got to be careful. Make sure that like the, the, the investors that you choose, and you do have a choice as well, Make sure you feel comfortable with them because they will get on your board because they have a fiduciary duty to report to their investors, um, that, you know, how their, their investment's doing. And a crappy board member that's a pain in your side, a thorn in your side, is worse than a bad marriage. It's brutal, right? It's, it's, you, you, in a bad marriage, you get divorced, God forbid. But with bad investors that are a pain in the neck, um, you can't get rid of them. It, it, it's hard. It's hard. So really, really be careful and think longer term. You know, everybody that invests in, in your company and is going to join your board, think of them as a prosthetic extension to your management team. And for me personally, when, when I used to work in venture capital, uh, when I had the privilege of winning a deal and serving on a board and many boards, I would think of myself as a prosthetic extension of the management team. And I was very competitive as well. And I wanted to get the first call from the CEO or founder of the company I invested in. I wanted to get the first call of all the board members. I want it to be me so I can help more. And, and that's a good kind of a channel check on, are you adding value? You know, I, I would introduce them to a lot of customers, et cetera. And so when you do get investors, it serves a couple of purposes. Number one, of course, capital, so you can grow your business. And number two, more importantly, in my humble opinion, how can they add value to help grow your company? So again, you go seed round, A, B, C, D, and then IPO. And the reason, the, the time to go public is usually when revenue growth is slowing. So when you start a company and you get seed funding, you get money and you grow. Then you get the A round, you get more money, and look at the growth is accelerating, revenue is accelerating. And the second that revenue is growing but, but starting to slow down, that's when the, uh, the venture capitalists give the company or call their investment bank or friends and say, hey, take this public. Almost all companies that are publicly traded have positive revenue growth, have, have positive revenue growth, but, but growth is slowing. It's decelerating. Think, think of the derivative, right? Uh, unless they buy a company, et cetera. So that's the whole process of, of, of going from a, a seed stage investment through venture capital uh, to, to an IPO. And if you have additional questions about that process, uh, please let me know. And thank you as always. And we do a lot of case studies in my MBA degree program uh, on actual IPOs. And it's a lot of fun too. And I've worked on lots of them. Okay, next question is uh, Maria, who's saying, hey, Chris, I hope all is well with you. Likewise, uh, I'm following your Get Your Dream Job course, and I'm getting rejections or radio silence from job applications. Any tip on, on how to stay uh, motivated? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'll let, you have to let me know, please, um, what they're saying uh, in terms of why you're getting rejected, and then I can address that. Um, let me know what you think, Maria, um, is is or are your biggest perceived weaknesses, and then during this call, what I'm going to do based on your response is I'm going to turn them into wicked strengths. So your biggest weaknesses are your biggest strengths, uh, and, and I'll elaborate on that in more detail. And for those of you that, that signed up for my platinum degree of my MBA degree program, you get one-on-ones. So I'll teach you how to interview and I'll personally write your LinkedIn profile for you. So again, Maria, let me know what feedback you're getting and I will turn those perceived weaknesses uh, into strengths in real time during this call and thank you. All right, 
Uh, next question is, um, I had a question that I'd asked in your course. Um, I'm having, um, hold on a second. Let me just scroll down here. Sorry. It, 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 it happens sometimes. It, it jumped on me. All right. Ah. All right, hold on a second. Search for the word, the name Maria. Here we go. I found it. Thank you. All right. Um, I had a question I had asked in your course. I'm having a bit of a hard time trying to adapt my graphic slash communication design and my 3D design skills into general valuable uh, experience. Okay. Um, and then let, let me know, though, um, what, what you mean in terms of this, like what, what the question is. Humbly, please. I say with love my heart. Um, it, it's, it's, I want to understand um, what, what, what you're getting at. And, and probably the best way for me to answer your question, Maria, is let me know what your perfect life is in 10 years. And then what we'll do live here today is there's a gap and I'll focus on how to fill that gap. And Maria, if you want to, and this is completely up to you, let me know if you want me to in real time, go to your LinkedIn profile and take a look and give you my humble feedback. Now, you're not allowed to, YouTube won't let you paste links here. Um, so just let me know um, and I'll go to your profile right now and, and, and I'll humbly help if I can. All right, next up is uh, Michael Young. Michael is saying, can you give any tips for international students uh, to get a good job if they're studying abroad uh, to get green cards? Yeah. Um, yeah, so it, it takes time to, to get a green card. Um, the way you can do it is if you work at a company that's international, you can get them to sponsor you. And I'll give you an example of what I did. So I went to work at Goldman Sachs. Um, you know, I'm, I'm from Canada. They flew me down to New York. I worked very, very hard. Um, and what they did, uh, and in my internship class, there was, there was um, like 18 interns uh, from Columbia um, uh, MBA school where I went and Harvard Business School. And I was the only one humbly to get a job offer of all of them. Um, and I worked so, so hard. To, and, and the other people are way smarter than me. I just worked hard, I guess. But I worked very, very hard there. Uh, and then eventually, uh, Goldman Sachs uh, hired a lawyer named Tim Todd. Tim Todd, Todd with two Ds, um, to work six months around the clock to get me a green card. Right. And so they were awesome about it. Um, and, and what you can do is if, if you, if you work at an international firm and you want to get to the country that firm is based in, do a good job in one of the satellite offices and then get a transfer to the mother ship. And if you do a great job, they'll walk through walls for you and get you that green card. Now, a little side note in terms of my green card. So that was back, um, in 01, you know, when I worked there, Goldman had Tim Todd, the lawyer, do all the paperwork for me and for a couple of colleagues of mine. And the colleagues of mine got their green cards, and I did not. Uh, and the reason was because of 9-11. You know, I have, a, I have an Arabic last name, uh, and I was on a, some no-fly list, uh, which sucked. Um, but I, I, I hated it, and I remember traveling overseas, and at, they were asked, especially in Germany, I remember this, what my ethnic background was when I landed in Frankfurt, and it drove me crazy. But the only positive thing about all that was when I would go to LaGuardia, which is New York City's airport, one of their three airports, there was a massive line after 9-11 to get in, uh, to, to go through security for obvious reasons. And I would go to the front of the line. I would say, I'm on that list. Uh, and they would say, okay, no problem. They give me an extra pat down, whatever. Uh, and then I got to sit in the lounge and I was a baller just hanging out. But eventually I did get my green card after a while. But that's how the whole process works. Yeah. All right. Um, next up, we have uh, Kundan is saying, Chris, I haven't really seen a popular ecosystem that is completely decentralized. Uh, do you think uh, there is any future of blockchain or is this another, just another hype? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I think it's um, I don't think it's just hype. But I, I do believe that uh, most cryptocurrencies are a scam. Um, and I've done a ton of research on cryptos. I think 99% of them are scams. And there are going to be a lot of people that eventually will go to jail because what they do is they pump and dump, meaning on their YouTube channels, they'll tell you which cryptos to buy. Then you buy them. Then they'll tell you to sell them. Then you'll sell them. Rinse, lather, repeat. Um, but I do believe that um, if you do a lot of research on cryptos, and I have a course called the Complete Cryptocurrency Course. If you do a lot of research on, on cryptos, the most important thing you can focus on is supply is the number of 
bitcoins or cryptocurrency, I should say in general, is the supply going to be limited or not? If, if, if not, then investing in that crypto is just as bad as investing in fiat or paper-based currency. So always look for supply. Now, when it comes to blockchain, so for those of you not familiar with blockchain, blockchain is, um, there's two ways to explain it. One way is with Bitcoin. It's a digital ledger. Okay, so think of it as a ledger, one of those old accounting books that's up in the cloud somewhere. It's decentralized on many computers. And you can download the whole blockchain if you want to. And all that lists, the blockchain, is how many, how many uh, Bitcoins were mined or created uh, and when the transactions occurred uh, and the address of the public wallets or public keys, I should say, uh, for each of those, right? It's, it, it's all listed in that blockchain. Now, that's for Bitcoin. There are other cryptocurrencies where blockchain is much more than just a digital ledger. For example, uh, there is a cryptocurrency called Ethereum. The actual name of the, uh, the crypto is, is Ether, but Ethereum is the platform. And the blockchain for Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies as well, the blockchain is not just to, to store um, you know, the, the digital ledger of transactions that occurred, but it's also so much more. It can store election ballot information. We're not there yet, um, but hopefully we'll, we'll get there at some point for obvious reasons. It can also think of it as DocuSign uh, for cryptos. So secure contracts up in the cloud on that blockchain, you know, legal contracts, auto contracts, uh, et cetera. It's just a more secure way and transparent way uh, to, uh, to, to document information online. All right. Um, ne next question is, is it worth it to learn blockchain development now uh, for future scope, like uh, solidity for uh, Ethereum? Yeah. Only if you're passionate about it. I, I really do believe that if, if you absolutely love doing something in life and you don't do it for the money, but you do it because your heart loves it, then this will work much better and you'll reach your full potential. Uh, and so the next step in terms of how to develop for blockchain is I recommend going to uh, Udemy uh, and doing a search uh, for blockchain courses and taking a course from uh, this brilliant man named Kirill uh, on Udemy. Okay. Uh, next up, we have uh, Dante, uh, and Dante is saying, good morning, Chris. A recruiter reached out to me about an eSports e uh, digital producer role. Uh, I had my first interview last week, and I got invited for a second interview on Monday. Any tips for me? Good for you. Good for you. I do believe that in our lifetime, uh, you're going to have eSports celebrities um, like Ninja, for example, at Fortnite, etc. They're going to make way, 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 way more than entire basketball or football or hockey or soccer teams and their best athletes too. It's an infinitely scalable business model and I'm incredibly bullish on e-sports. And in my MBA degree program, I actually teach you um, how to use, how to create a, a live webcast using four different software products. This one here I'm currently using, uh, which, which is called um, Wirecast. I also teach you how to use uh, an open source free version of this product uh, called OBS, which stands for Open Broadcast Software. That's the second one. The third one is I teach you how to use Streamlabs OBS, which is like OBS, but a little bit more for video games. And the last one is Twitch. I teach you how to use Twitch as well. And I do a quick demo on it uh, as well, because I really do believe that those business models are infinitely scalable. Yeah. Now, in terms of, of your next uh, interview, so w whenever you go and you, you, you go to an interview, you, you got to think to yourself in business from the other person's perspective. And most people in business are motivated by three things. The first one is they want to make more money. Second one is they want to, they want to get promoted faster. And the third one is they kind of want to enjoy what they do. And so if you can help them, whoever you're meeting with, with one of those three categories, then I think it'll give you a leg up in terms of how to add value. Um, you can take my um, complete job course uh, online, go to my website for more details. Uh, and that will teach you how to add value in all meetings. It will also uh, teach you what uh, one page reports to bring to add value. Um, and in addition, if you take my MBA degree program, I have much, much more than what I just mentioned there. So try to add value, um, you know, enhance that person's life or that person's uh, role at the company. If that person you're meeting for, um, you're meeting with one of the people, for example, 
is the head of sales at this digital production company. Um, then what I recommend doing is I recommend going to their LinkedIn profile and find out what territory they have or go to their Twitter profile to see who they follow because they probably follow their customers and then network and see if you can get uh, potential customers for that person. Uh, and you can take my MBA degree program for more details on exactly how to do this. It works exceptionally well. That's what I recommend. Now, in terms of what to do before all meetings in general in business, uh, what I recommend doing is always go to their Twitter profile because you can learn a lot about a person uh, by looking at their Twitter profile. And since you mentioned esports, um, let me talk about baseball. So when I go to somebody's Twitter profile, if, and I love baseball, um, if they're from Baltimore or they follow uh, the Baltimore Orioles, great baseball team, you know, during the meeting, I'll ask them about probably the best Baltimore Oriole baseball player ever, Cal Ripken, or I'll bring that up uh, indirectly. Um, you you got to bond before business always. A, a big rookie mistake in interviews uh, and in business and in sales meetings, a big rookie mistake is people like to jump immediately into business. Business is about relationships first and product knowledge second. So when you get to that meeting, for the first 10 minutes of any meeting, when you meet somebody for the first time, just try to bond with them. And if you look at their Twitter profile, you'll find out what their interests are. You know, So for example, for me, on my Twitter profile, I follow Dave Chappelle. Uh, and so I don't know if somebody brought that up during an interview somehow, um, I'd had a, I'd have a good laugh with them about it, uh, that sort of thing. Um, and, and you don't have to directly bring it up by, by saying, I was looking at your Twitter profile and I was stalking you and I noticed, no, no. just make it natural uh, as well. You know, just get to know them, start high level, ask them about what sports they enjoy or where they're from, et, et cetera. And you got to find one or two things in common with them and just talk about that. It works, dude. Uh, and, and Dante, I remember years ago, uh, I was a, having a dry spell. It was hard for me to get a job. And, and I was practicing more than anybody. And I'd show up to those meetings. And I'd be like, dude, I, I, I nailed it. Why did I not get the job? And I realized because I wasn't bonding. And so what happened was um, eventually I went to an interview. And I told myself, I just don't care if I get the job. I don't care. And I just kind of sat back and... I don't know, it talked about life. And I got that job. And one data point doesn't make a trend, a couple do. And that's worked for me multiple times now in my career. Same thing with getting customers. You always got to bond before business because relationships are more important than product knowledge. The last thing I'll say is that your network uh, is, is your net worth. All right. And I have a spill-proof coffee mug this week. For those of you that remember last week, now I, I show you this book, but what you don't see actually is, is this, the coffee. Yeah, I, I have a drip, I have a spill-proof coffee mug now, um, kind of like a sippy cup for adults. Yeah. I have a drinking problem. Your, 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 your teacher has a drinking problem. I, I spill, oh, I didn't just spill it once last week, I spilled it twice. I, I spilled it this way because I had a green screen behind me and I was trying to set up a different environment here. Uh, and then I texted my wife, God bless her. It's the first time she ever made me coffee. I asked her, please make me coffee. And she brought it to the door and I got it and I put it on this side and I spilled it this way as well. Okay, so absent-minded professor. So be careful. If you sign up for my MBA degree program, just know that I'm, I'm not all there sometimes. Just kidding. You'll love it or your money back. All right. Um, uh, uh, next question is from uh, Dr. Asif. Hey, Dr. Asif. Uh, and, and Dr. A is saying, hi, Chris. Good, good afternoon from the United Kingdom. Uh, good afternoon to you as well. Um, I'm so sorry to hear about, um, uh, about uh, the four-week process of, of, of not going to work, et cetera. Um, we might have to go through that in the United States again as well. Uh, I'm not sure. I just think we should all try to be like New Zealand. Uh, as they have no new cases and their prime minister is a rock star. She rocks. Yeah. Um, and then the question here is, can you please advise what is a good camera to use with a teleprompter? I've tried to use a few web com uh, cams with my teleprompter, but still I'm struggling to look into the eyes of the audience as you are here with us, uh, especially when, when reading PowerPoint. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So 
be careful with, with webcams. So when you look at a camera, if it says it's 4K, it doesn't matter. Why? Because what matters is the size of the image processor. And a webcam, the, the image processor, which is kind of like the brain of a camera, it's the size of a thumbnail. With a regular DSLR camera or a crop sensor or a mirrorless camera, it's bigger, right? So uh, the, the, the regular size ones are 35 millimeters, uh, actually 36 to be exact. That's why they call it 35 millimeter film. So make sure you get a bigger sensor if you can. And I recommend um, getting a DSLR camera if you can. Um, and the best one I recommend or the mirrorless camera I recommend is called the Canon M50. And let me show you the Canon M50. And I don't get kickbacks from anybody. I will never be sponsored by anybody. I, I will never sell out. Um, but but let me, let's go there together. So if we go to um, Canon M50 Amazon, this is probably one of the better cameras to start with. Here we go. All right. So this is what's called a mirrorless camera. Uh, and they call it that because when you take a picture, there's no mirror that flips up. It's just a smaller form factor. So I recommend looking at, at this one initially. Okay. Um, and the great thing about this camera also is if you're going to vlog with it, um, you can turn the screen around. It's moronic that anybody sells a camera and calls it a vlogging camera without that. The screen turns around. Um, also, you got a microphone port in the side. You put your microphone there as, as well. Uh, not all DSLR cameras or, or mirrorless cameras ha have that. Um, and it's very light as well. And, and this will work out quite well image sensor wise as well. It, it's much, much better uh, than any webcam. Uh, and, and if you have additional questions about that, uh, please let me know. But, but, but I recommend actually, if you're going to set up a teleprompter, like what, what I do right here. Um, and whenever I give speeches online or teach online, people don't realize, but I'm, I'm actually clicking pedals that change the slides. Um, so I, I use pedals uh, to, to control the, um, the camera angle as well. Um, and, and it's something I kind of hacked, um, but you can do, you can buy pedals that are like keyboards and they plug into a USB port and you just map a key. And so whenever I present online uh, and I use PowerPoint, I map those pedals, which are on the ground here, to the left and right button for PowerPoint to switch the PowerPoint slides. Now, in terms of how to do it effectively, you have to be careful because if you use a teleprompter like I'm using now, and you have the typical white background with black text, what happens is it screws up what the camera sees. Uh, and, and so let me see if I can actually get it here. I, I, I don't even think I can because I, I, I turned on... Um, yeah, you, you, you won't be able to see here. So I, I actually turned on um, uh, accessibility features. Um, so you go into the control panel or preferences on a Mac and you reverse the font. So everything you see instead of black font on white background, it's actually white font, white text on a black background, right? So therefore, there's not as much white reflection from, from the camera. Make sure you do that. In terms of the teleprompter equipment, um, you can get, you can spend a lot of money on these things, um, but I recommend doing this. I re recommend spending 50 bucks and, and getting a little screen. And let me, I'll show you, and I'm, I'm fully transparent. I guess I have to use my pedals now. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll show you the, the one that I bought. Okay, so let's, let's go over here. Let's go to my orders. All right. Uh, and this, by the way, this is what I'm drinking this morning. Uh, acai right here. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, 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 it's, it's in my, my shake here. It's a South American fruit. Antioxidants gives me energy and stuff. So let me search for screen. I bought a, a screen a, a while ago. Um, let me see. Hold on. There, there's a little screen. I think here it is here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so this here, it's, um, $50, $50. And basically what it is, is it's one of those little screens that people put in their cars, etc. It's just a monitor. That's all it is with an HDMI port. And so what I do is I attach this to my computer uh, and, and I look through it. Uh, and then I also bought a two-way mirror on the top. And there's tons you can buy as well. So, um, and, and you might have to reverse the font on here as well. So it's, it's mirror image, which is easy to do. Or you can do it within PowerPoint too. So let me do a search for teleprompter. So get that product I mentioned, hook it up to, uh, to PowerPoint. 
and then just buy any of these these ones here like for example this guy here this is for an ipad obviously ipad's not included and you just basically put that little screen i mentioned the 50 dollars screen down here and have it reflect and, and there's tons of them just like that um now the the ones that are expensive are the ones that are all in one that actually include a screen um, you, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. And you, you'll notice with, with politicians that a lot of them use prompters and some of them are good at it, some are not. So uh, and it's not a political comment here, but uh, Obama, who I think is the, probably the best public speaker alive today, he's really good. He will look at teleprompters and then he'll use transition words as well. Like he'll say in terms of uh, moving on to, uh, my fellow Americans, the bottom line is this. And what I just did there was I used uh, transition words that tied together logic. And when he uses those transition words, he's actually looking at the teleprompter for what to say next. There are other presidents like, like Trump, for example. Uh, and so uh, he, he uses a prompter on both sides, but he doesn't make it as natural. Not a political comment. This is what he does. He'll talk like this, and then he'll kind of turn over here to look at the other teleprompter as well. Um, there are artful ways to be subtle about it as well. Don't just read. Um, list your bullet points and then um, get comfortable with using transition words. Uh, and, and I teach about this too in my MBA program on how to interview and how to sell. Transition words are in terms of moving on to and the bottom line is that sort of thing. And I, I teach you that and, and much, much, much more. All right, um, and if you have additional questions uh, about that, let me know. One more thing I have to mention is this. If you have a bigger screen that's hooked up to your teleprompter, make sure there's something called the underscan. And, and it's it, it, in your system software, you, you can change the monitor so that it's smaller. Otherwise, what happens is if you use the whole screen, it's a bigger screen, I'm reading like this. Obviously, I'm exaggerating, but but I think you, I think you understand what I'm saying. All right, um, and I've set it up too so that I actually have um, multiple um, uh, multiple pedals. Like I sometimes have six or seven below me so I can change the lighting as well as the camera angles, as well as the slides behind me, as well as what I'm reading, the teleprompter, yeah. Uh, it, and I think it's a great skill to learn because um, if you can master that, it's not that hard to do. <clears throat> Pardon me, if, if you can master that, um, then if you're interviewing online, and you're clicking through slides, they'll never know. But if you have to talk about a certain pitch, you can run through it and you'll nail it. You'll, 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 you'll look awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, next question, question from Amin who's saying, hi, Chris. Hey, I moved to Germany two years ago, but because of the language, I can't get to know people and build up a team for soft for a software company. I'm considering moving to Canada. Uh, what's your opinion? Yeah. <clears throat> So I, I think that the lines, I think borders have been kind of eliminated uh, when it comes to setting up your own company. You know, you can, you can start a company anywhere in the world. You don't have to be in the San Francisco Bay Area or Shallow Alto uh, in order to do well in tech. You can work anywhere. And, and I think what COVID has is, is kind of taught us is that you can make this a reality. You know, you, you don't have to actually go into the office. You don't actually have to have employees or contractors in your country. You know, a lot of my contractors, and I outsource almost everything, a lot of stuff, they're overseas. You know, I have a bunch in Canada, uh, the Philippines as well, all over the world. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And I'm here in the San Francisco Bay Area, and the cost of living is insanely high. And I do question, should I stay here or, or leave? It, it doesn't make sense for me to stay. Well, it sort of does because next year I'll be interviewing CEOs, um, people you've heard of uh, in the MBA degree program. And I want to drive down to Silicon Valley to meet with them. But we've witnessed the death of distance because of COVID. You know, uh, when, when, when you know, life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And a lot of companies have adapted by allowing their, their employees to, to work from home. And so when it comes to you, and finding um, people to work with in your software company, even though you're based in Germany and you don't speak the language, you don't speak German, you mentioned there, you can still find people online uh, th th that can help you out uh, tremendously. And if you want little gigs to be done, um, what you can do is you can reach out to a company called, uh, whoops, wrong pedal, called, uh, called Fiverr. Uh, and let me go there with you. 
All right, let's go. Let me just arrange this window. Sorry about that. All right, let's go here to Fiverr. So Fiverr is, is a great company based uh, in, in Tel Aviv. <clears throat> and, and, and what they do is you they allow you for five bucks to get anything you want done. Um, so it starts at five bucks. So let's look at my orders. I'll show you what I've had done. Um, I've actually had a lot of... Um, I've actually had a, a, a lot of stuff done here. Like all my book covers are, are done over over Fiverr uh, as well. And you could start freelancing here as, as, as well, right? So um, I had uh, the doc from Back to the Future, pretend voice talking like he's making a fool of me like usual uh, in one of my cryptocurrency courses. I had my logos done here as, as well, you know? Um, I even had pretend ones uh, done, um, which are uh, for, for shark virtual reality. So for those of you that, that have taken my, um, uh, that, that have taken my complete financial analyst course, um, I actually got uh, a lot of these logos done here. I also had this one done here as well. Um, let's see if I can even open it. I don't know why it's not open here. I guess I have to download it first. Um, in my complete financial analyst course, I have Morgan Haroon Sachs. And this is one of, one of the logos I, I had done there uh, as, as well. I got to change this up here. So sort of that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, you can go there or what you can do is you can go to upwork.com and you could pay people that do stuff for you here tech wise, or you can actually do it yourself here. Why not make money on the side? Nice little side hustle. Now you can also, if you want to find developers and you want to network online, what you can do is you can go to meetup.com. And um, these events, and you can go in person, uh, or you can go, um, um, you can do online events. So I was showing a student from Riyadh, one of my, my, my platinum students, how to do this. So let's say you want to find, um, I don't know, say, say you're, you're not a techie. You're like Steve Jobs, and you, and you need to find your Wozniak, a techie. Um, you can find people, for example, Python. Uh, and what you can do is um, you can go to uh, Python-based uh, events, a free meetup here in, in Riyadh, for, for example, right? Um, so, or actually this one's Tel Aviv, this one's Cairo, but you, it, this one's Qatar. You can search based on region as well. I mean, there, there's a, a free meetup for everything, right? So let me do another one for fun. Let's go to 90210, because you know, Beverly Hills. Uh, and let's search for, I don't know, say hardware. Hardware. Say you're trying to find somebody that has hardware experience. These are free events you can go to. And um, what you can do is you can go to a hardware investor conference. This is on Zoom. Um, this one, I don't think it's, oh, it is an online event as well. There's a lot more online events now because of COVID. But usually what happens is there, you actually go in, in person, right? So, so network using this product as well. And that might help you also to find software developers uh, to, to work with, again, We've witnessed the death of distance. The bottom line is you don't need to be uh, in a tech center I anymore uh, in order to um, create a successful tech company. You know, it's almost a hindrance because the cost of living in tech centers is, is pretty high. All right. Uh, next question is from Kendrew, who's saying, uh, any tips for working with indecisive family members in a family business? Yeah, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. It's, it's hard when it comes to politics and family too. Really hard. Um, let me think about this. Hold on. Okay. So you're, you're, you're working with somebody in your family, in a company, and they can't make decisions. Maybe you can have it. So it's, it's kind of a, a vote based system. Um, have an odd number of people, um, to decide. So that's why a lot of boards, like you'll notice that when, when the people have boards, uh, the boards have an odd number. So there's never gridlock. Because if a board has eight people, then if four vote for something and four against something, well, you're not getting anywhere. But if a board has seven people and four vote for it and three against, well, you can still make a decision. So what I would do is I would try to have decision-making processes done by an odd number of people. That might help. Uh, and if that didn't answer your question uh, properly, as always, please let me know. Thank you. And if you're not watching the TV show Succession, you have to. It's the best business show on television right now. It's about a family uh, business. Um, it's really well done. Macaulay Culkin's uh, little brother, Kieran Culkin. There's like 8 million Culkins out there. 
but it's it's a it's it's sort of a, a play on Rupert Murdoch's uh, business uh, News Corp. It, it's fun, but it's a family business and it's a disaster uh, because of that as well. Yeah, not all family businesses are disasters, but some are because there, there's a saying that the first generation makes money, the second spends it, and the third has none. Not in all cases, but watch Succession. I think you'll love it. And if you have follow-up questions, let me know. Thank you. Okay, next question is, will GPT-3 eat up all developer jobs? I, I, I don't know. I'm so sorry. Okay, uh, next up, question from Ram, which is, uh, hey, Chris, hey, I'm 21 and I'm from India. Very cool. Uh, I'm about to launch uh, my EdTech uh, Marketplace um, startup. I'm really confused on how to plan my finance. Is there any thumb rule that you can share uh, to not go bankrupt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, congratulations for starting a company at a very young age. That's, that's awesome. Um, so failing to plan is planning to fail. And I, I, I'm amazed at <clears throat> why people don't write a thorough business plan before starting a company. Um, it's one of the most important decisions you'll ever make in your life. And if you don't do it right, you know, it can take years off your life, destroy your social life, your health, et cetera, whatever. Uh, and so you have to write a business plan first. And so I have a course um, called the Complete Business Plan Course. I recommend taking that. Um, it's, there's a 30-day 100% money-back guarantee, which is the case with all my courses and all my MBA degree programs. And during that nine-hour course, the Complete Business Plan Course, I teach you from scratch how to write a 50 to 100-page business plan. I give you 50 templates as well. I also give you 25 PowerPoint templates to help you raise money in creating 10-page slides. For, for marketing purposes. I cover every aspect of business in the business plan course as well. I, I cover finance and accounting from scratch. Even if you don't know what a balance sheet or income statement is, I teach you from scratch. We do strategic planning. We discuss your go-to-market strategy. Uh, we talk about the competition. We talk about um, employees, strengths, weaknesses, etc. So check that out, please. The complete business plan course because failing to plan is planning to fail. And I, that's the most cheesy saying ever, but but I have to say it because I care. Yeah. Now, in terms of not going bankrupt, um, I, I humbly recommend not getting a loan ever. Okay, don't get a loan because if you get a loan from a bank and you miss one payment, uh, you know, banks are chicken. They can take everything. Talk to a lawyer. Make sure to register your company as well first. Okay. Now, <clears throat> pardon me, in terms of money, um, I don't want you to use your own money. Maybe a little bit if you have some. I want you to use OPM, not the drug. OPM stands for other people's money. And I want you to raise money from high net worth investors. How? Well, go, go to my website, download my website's haroonventures.com. Uh, download my networking book for free. It's um, it's over 200 pages. And the version you download will not, will not have spilled coffee on it like I have here. It's, it's over 200 pages. And it'll tell you how to network to get investors a job, customers, anything you want, okay? And I want you to target high net worth investors to invest in your company. Um, and as with all cases, whenever you raise money, you have to get lawyers involved to write an offering memorandum, okay? Uh, and, and they have to do that, uh, write the offering or investor memorandum so that all the risks are listed so that it protects you and your investor as well. All right, and, and in my MBA degree program, we go into much more detail uh, than the complete business plan course as well. In fact, in the third semester of the MBA degree program, and there's four, four semesters, in the, fir the third semester, we actually go through a venture capital boot camp. Um, and I've worked with some of the most sophisticated boot camps, uh, venture capital boot camps, you've heard of all of them. Um, and in this MBA degree program during the third semester, I put you through my boot camp as well. And I help you write your business plan. Um, and if you're a, a platinum um, a MBA degree student, um, I help you out one-on-one -on -one as well. If you're in the gold version of the program, uh, what I do is you can ask questions publicly or within the course as many times as you want to as well. For more details, go to harunmba.com or you can sign up for a master class that I have coming up um, on November 27th. You can register here for the master class. Uh, and I, there's a lot of prizes. I give away a couple of 100% scholarships to the Platinum and Gold program. And everybody that comes gets a free course and much, much more as well. So sign up today, please. Okay. All right. 
Next question is from uh, Amin, who's asking, um, and, and if I mispronounce anyone's name, please correct me. Please, please, please. Um, I, I have one student from India uh, named uh, Anadi, uh, and I pronounced his name Anathi uh, a couple times, and, and I asked him the right pronunciation. Just, just let me know, please. Thanks. Yeah, and my name, by the way, is pronounced, my last name, it's pronounced uh, heroin. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I mean, he's saying um, another question. I don't have a Bachelor of Science or a Master of Science in Computer Science or Data Science. How can I convince a software company to hire me uh, while the Master's in Science in Computer Science is a requirement in the job description? Yeah, yeah. So, education is changing materially to the extent that a lot of the best tech companies do not require you to have a university degree to get a job there. Examples include Google, Facebook, one of the few things Facebook's done right, Apple, IBM, and even banks like Wells Fargo, et cetera. You know, the, these, these, these companies, they, they understand that a lot of times, you know, just hiring people that have a piece of paper from university is not enough. So what you can do if you want to is you can take online courses on Udemy, for example, and then put your, um, your, your certificates um, on your LinkedIn profile. Uh, and so let me go here. And I don't get um, kickbacks from Udemy or anything from mentioning this stuff. It, it's an algorithm if my courses suck, which most of them do. Um, it, it's, yeah. All right, so let's go to Udemy. And actually, let me, let me go into incognito mode so that cookies don't remember me. Oops, Udemy. And what you can do here, I recommend taking courses from Rob Percival uh, as well as Dr. Angela Yu. Here she is. She's wonderful. I met her in Berlin last year. Um, and so you can, and, and by the way, she's incredible. So she's a doctor, a medical doctor uh, in the United Kingdom. She's British, which, mean, which means she speaks gooder than me. But, but what she decided was she enjoys teaching tech programming more. So her courses are awesome, right? So you can take, you know, this course, it's 60 hours. It's dude, she raises the bar for all of us. Unbelievable. I'll never get a rating that high. Uh, but anyway, so she has uh, this course here, which is 100 days to code. It'll teach you from scratch uh, Python. This one here is the complete uh, web development bootcamp as well. From scratch, she'll teach you how to make websites and much, much more as well. She'll teach you how to make iOS apps, et cetera, Android apps. So I, I would check that out. And, and you can put these on your profile as well. Now, other teachers that are, are worth uh, checking out, Rob Percival is great. He's based in, in, in Cambridge. And I actually went to go visit him and he, he mentored me for a day there, nice guy. So he has a, a course called the Complete Web Developer Course as well, which will help you from scratch, uh, learn how, how to code. Uh, and all this stuff, and, and he's from England as well. Again, he speaks gooder than me. I, I do believe anyone with a British accent is just way smarter than I am. It's just, they just, they speak gooder, you know? So you can learn all these skills here as, as well. Um, they're, they're, they're great, they're great. Now, a, another thing you can do uh, if, if you want to, here I am. Another thing you can do is based on the stuff you learn from taking these, these Udemy courses, um, you can create your own portfolio online. You know, make your own website. You know, go to wix.com or squarespace.com or WordPress, whatever it is. Create a website and on this website have samples of your code or the products you developed, whatever it might be. And put a link to that on your resume or LinkedIn profile as, as well. So you can show, you know, the, the sample code or sample products that, that you developed. Yeah. All right. Next up, Dario. Hey, how are you, man? Uh, Dario's from, from Italy. Um, and Dario's saying, I just want to say hi and you rock. Thank you. Thanks, man. And I, I love your icons as well, especially the, the one that looks like this. Yeah. And my kids started doing that years ago. And it's, I, I was like, what, what, what does that mean? Like, I'm, I'm used to saying stuff like groovy or how hip. I'm an old man. And so I looked into it. What does this mean? And it's apparently drug dealers would do it. And if they had drugs in their mouth, whatever, and they saw a police officer, uh, they, would, they would point that way. So the police officer would look away and they'd blow the smoke in their elbow, apparently. I don't do drugs. Okay. <clears throat> Anymore. All right. 
Next up, um, uh, Ritesh is saying, hi, Chris, I'm loving learning from you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Ritesh is saying, uh, it, it's late for us uh, because of, of daylight. Yeah, yeah. And a couple of people mentioned that earlier as well uh, for, from India, uh, because daylight savings, the time changed here in the Bay Area, but not, um, not in India. Um, sorry about that. Uh, and then Kunan is asking, Chris, I'm learning web development now, and I want to work uh, in a startup for experience. How can I pros prospect the company from salary or stock options uh, point of view? Yeah. Um, so the best way to get a job, I think that just applying for a job because you see a job opening doesn't work anymore. You know, every time you see a job opening online, thousands of other people apply. And the person that gets the job quite often knows somebody at the, at the company. So what I want you to do is network instead. And go to my website, download my, my networking book for free. And the version you download won't have coffee spilled on it like I did last week. It was a disaster. I have a drinking problem, clearly. Uh, but what I recommend doing is read this book from my website, haroonventures.com. And then take my complete job course or sign up for my MBA degree program. Uh, and this will help you to get informational meetings. Okay, to network aggressively. Um, and then after you network aggressively and you develop a great network at a company that you want to work at, then you can ask them for tips on how to apply, etc. It works, I promise you. Check it out or take my complete job course or my MBA degree program. Uh, and if it doesn't work, your money back. There's a 30-day money back guarantee uh, with, with, with all my courses and, and degree programs, etc. So when it comes to salary versus options, I always recommend that you focus more on salary. And here's why. And I know that's controversial. For every Google, there's a gazillion other tech companies that go nowhere. And if you work at a tech company and the tech company is doing well, they're going to give you stock options anyway. They are. So I would try to get a bigger base salary initially. It's just smarter from a risk management perspective. Again, if the company does well, they're going to give you stock options for free anyway. Now, in the interview with them, don't say you don't want any stock options because it might signal that you're short-term focused and you're not bullish on the company. Bullish meaning positive. Bearish means the opposite. So negotiate for a little bit more base salary uh, than shares if you possibly can. Yeah, that's what I would say. Because what, what's going to happen is... A big part of your net worth is going to be based on that company. Uh, and it's good to diversify away, meaning get a salary so you can invest in other companies on the stock market, for example, or bonds or commodities, etc. You don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. From a risk management perspective, I recommend getting more cash than options, but also get some options. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> All right, next up, we got uh, Manas, uh, who's uh, one of my students from India, uh, who recently made his first Udemy course. Awesome. Uh, and he also published a book. Uh, and, and God bless you. Thank you for writing about me in, in the forward there in the book. And, and I profiled your book uh, last last week on the air, too. Thank you. All right, next up, we got uh, Phil. Phil is saying, hi, Chris. Um, other than the two, um, uh, the, the, the three-hour sessions, yeah, uh, so there's there's three hour sessions in, in total in the platinum program. Yeah. Um, other than the, the three hour sessions, uh, and, and it can be spread out over, over the year uh, as well. Uh, in, in, and I'll show you how I actually do it. Um, so later today, I'm, I'm doing one on ones. Let me just add uh, another camera here and, and I'll show you exactly what, what my students will see. Whoops, wrong camera. Add another one. Nope. Almost there. Hold on. I want to show you how I do it. Here we go up top. Hi there. Yeah, so, so there's actually um, a, a timer, right? And so I'm doing 20 minute slots today uh, as, as well, right? So I stand up sometimes when I do these things and yeah. So um, so it's, it's up to you if you wanna do 20 minute sessions or three one hour sessions, et cetera. But your question is other than the, the three hour sessions, approximately how much time per week do you realistically think we'll need to spend working on the courses, materials, exercise, et cetera, please, yeah. Yeah, so it's pass or fail. And I set it up that way because I think a lot of business schools that have the whole process of 
you know, force grading curve and making people fail. And it, it leads to sharks. And I want a collegial friendly atmosphere where everybody gets along. Um, and, and so it's pass or fail. And so all you have to do is after every class, there's a quiz, which is five minutes. That's it. That's all there is. And so there's a hundred core classes. Uh, and so there's a hundred quizzes. It's that simple. And the quizzes aren't that hard either. It's just pass or fail. And I always recommend doing the quizzes right away after each class. So it'll only take you a couple of minutes. So it's fresh in, in your mind. Um, and I want to teach you, and I've successfully, humbly, uh, taught my students um, using edutainment. I wear my heart in my sleeve. My license plate, it's tough to see back there. It says edutain. Uh, and so I, I want people to, to, to learn by accident. What does that mean? Well, when I'm teaching with a lot of props in an edutaining, humbly way, I think, um, you're learning by accident. You're like, oh my God, this is so much fun. This is like a, a movie or a TV show. I'm enjoying this. Oh, I'm learning too. That's how it's going to work. Yeah. And that's how it ha has worked. Um, so it's just five minutes. That's all it is. Yeah. And, and during class, actually, there's a couple hundred hours of, of classes. Um, what I do, and you can attend them live or watch the replay uh, on the weekends or whenever you want. Um, and you can take as long as you want to do the, the, the MBA degree program too. Take 10 years if you want or one year, right? Whatever you want. Uh, do it at your own pace, at your own pace, yeah. Uh, and there's optional exercises you can do as well. Like if you want to write your business plan on the side after I teach you, go ahead and do it. Uh, I, I don't grade you on that. I grade you on quizzes uh, only, yeah. And, and if there are uh, exercises, um, I like I have you do them in class. Like what I'll do is I'll, I'll say, okay, let's pause now for five minutes and complete this spreadsheet. And then I'll discuss the answers with you. I want you to learn in class. Yeah, it's a more efficient way to teach from a time management perspective as well. Okay. All right, uh, next up, uh, Manas is saying, I just want to tell you something, but I don't know whether or not I should. Um, I was analyzing some of the well-known websites and then I did analyze yours and I found something. Something is a little not so correct uh, with your website. Like your Google AdSense keywords are not hitting the bullseye. I'd love to tell you more if you're interested. Um, then you wrote, um, yeah. So if, if you want, I'm gonna ask what you can do is just tell me right here in front of everybody. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, and, and I've actually got a, a great firm that I've outsourced um, my, my sales and marketing to. Uh, it, it's called uh, Ziggy Media. They're based in Toronto, they're awesome. Uh, but if you have any advice, let me know right here, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then Manas wrote, uh, so is Google Chrome out of the market from 2021? This is breaking news as of now. Really? I'd be surprised. Unless they're, they're rebranding it or maybe it's for antitrust reasons. And, and Google's pretty damn smart. Um, they kind of rename, renamed themselves Alphabet a couple of years ago. And I think one of the reasons, and they'll, they'll never admit this, but I think one of the reasons is they know that antitrust is going to split the company up eventually. Uh, because... The biggest search engine in the world is Google. And the second biggest is YouTube, which we know is owned by Google. Yeah. But let me go there. Um, I, I didn't see any news on, on Chrome being out of the market, but I, I'd love to look into this. Okay. Chrome to exit market by 2021, per your comment there. Oh, apps removal. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't use any apps. I think they're they're crap anyway. They, they, they've tried to do it. Like you, you can set it up so that when you open a new tab, uh, you have apps appear here. Um, yeah, it's just not working for them. So, so they're retiring it. Uh, it's basically them saying it, it doesn't work, so we're removing them. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, next next up is, is Gerson. Uh, Gerson is saying, good morning, Chris. Nice to see you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you a billion times more. Okay, uh, next up, Dr. Asif is saying, hi, Chris. Uh, I have, um, sorry, I have two questions. No, no, please, this is, this is why I'm here. You're, you're the customer. The student is the customer. So the customer is always right. Ask as many questions as you want. And so your question is, can you please cast back uh, in your life and share with us how did you cope with failure and disappointment? Yeah, yeah. So I... Um, I remember years ago, 
like nothing was going right for me. You know, I, I, I made a firm. I worked out a ton of money. Um, I'm easy to work with. I'm a good guy. I'm not a shark. Uh, and then they, they let me go. And I think it's because my, my boss felt threatened that he hired his assassin and his boss would always call me and whatever. So, um, I, I remember that. And I remember calling my dad and I said, dad, I just can't get a break. You know, I, 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 I when I work really, really hard, I, I don't get recognized or people feel threatened and I, I just don't get it. And my dad said something to me, it kind of, kind of changed me. Uh, he, he, he said, um, he said, Chris, I want you to read the, the book of Job, which is from an old text. Uh, and it's prophetic because Job, um, the guy's name means Job, J-O-B, J-O-B. Um, and it's about this dude that lost everything and he didn't understand what was going on. And later on, he found out why and everything worked out great for him. Uh, and, and so for, for me, I always believe that, that God has a plan. And when I look back on my failures uh, in life or perceived failures, I'm so grateful they occurred because it, it, it guided me down a different path in life. And you might not under, understand it now, but you will in the long run. And I never get worried when it comes to career stuff because I always tell myself God already knows what's going to happen. And that puts peace in, in my heart. Yeah. yeah. And, and just understand that with crisis comes opportunity. You know, when, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Um, you got to be a contrarian and, and just think differently about things. Um, and the most successful people in business are unemotional about business. You know, they don't freak out when things are going well, when things are not going well. You know, and, and, New, and Warren Buffett said the New York Stock Exchange is the only store in the world where consumers sell stuff when it goes on, when it goes on sale. Think about that. So just be unemotional about business. Just understand with, with crisis comes opportunity. And in the long run, your career frustrations lead to breakthroughs. Because nobody that's reinvented the world or started their own company has done it without failing a lot first. And the most successful entrepreneurs have been fired many times. And you only have to be right in business one time. Michael Bloomberg, he was fired uh, from, from Merrill Lynch. And so he got his sweet revenge by starting a, his Bloomberg financial software empire. You know, Madonna, another crazy example. She was fired from Dunkin' Donuts. Robert Redford was fire, fired from an oil company uh, years ago. J.K. Rowling, uh, she couldn't get um, she couldn't get a publisher. Poor thing was a, a a single mother. She was an assistant, hated her job, and thirty publishers said no. And and there's there's other authors too. I don't have to just mention her. You know, there, there's um, John Grisham. Uh, there's also um, uh, C.S. Lewis and Agatha Christie. You know, all four of those aforementioned authors, they got rejected a gazillion times which this is kind of like them getting fired and having setbacks in their lives. But they persisted because, again, you only have to be right in business one time. And just, just know, and this is how I cope with things, and everyone's different. God already knows what's going to happen. And so that should put peace in your heart. And you might look back upon perceived failures decades from now and think to yourself, thank God that happened. I'm grateful. And I'll end this question with a great quote uh, from uh, Winston Churchill, which is this. He said, I once met a man who on his deathbed talked about all the worries he had in his life, none of which came true. Next question is, can you please recommend a good recourse to become proficient in treasury management. Thank you, and God bless you, you're right here. God bless you way more, thank you. Yeah, so I, I would say there's no textbook that's gonna teach you um, economics. And business schools that try to teach you supply and demand graphs, that's great if you wanna be, I don't know, an economist or the Minister of Finance in Japan or the head of the ECB or Bank of Canada or the Federal Reserve of the United States. But for the rest of us, um, it's not really helpful. The best way to learn about economics is as follows. I'm going to show you a resource that people pay for, but I'm going to show you how to get it for free. So the Financial Times is one of my favorite business websites. Okay, 
So let's go to FT.com. And when you go to, and think of the FT like the Wall Street Journal, but it's more global, kind of like the BBC is, is less biased than CNN or Fox News. I, I mentioned Democrat and Republican news source on purpose, so I don't piss anybody off. Um, so, uh, it, it, so basically what you do here is only, don't read anything that's going to give you an opinion on a stock. Just read about economic stuff here. It's a great resource to learn about economics. I'll give you an example here. Let me make one up here. Okay. All right, let's go to, okay, analysis of U.S. politics and policy. And maybe this article here touches upon um, treasuries, for example, treasury management. So if we click here, um, let me click for one here where it's going to charge me. I'm going to show you how to, how to not uh, get charged. All right. So... Let's say this, for example, trade policy right here. Okay. So if I click here on, on, on trade policy, what's next for U.S. trade policy? Then it's going to say, hey, wait a second. You got to give us a ton of money to read this. No. What you do is you copy the headline. Okay. Then you paste it. Okay. And then you click it here. And now you can read it for free. Okay. And you can also read it uh, from uh, the Financial Times website. You'll, you'll find the link somewhere down there. It just got rebroadcasted or syndicated elsewhere. I'm going to show you another example. Okay, So let, let me pick um, TikTok challenges Trump order ahead of U.S. whatever. So when I click this, it's saying, whoa, 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 you got to pay. Well, you don't. Here's why. All you got to do is copy this right here. Oops. Copy and then paste. Okay, right here. And then you click on it, and now you can read this for free. The reason you can read it for free, and yes, the FT will never sponsor me, but I don't care. I will walk through walls for my students. I'd rather add value to my students than make money. But the reason it's free is because if it wasn't, then this article from the Financial Times would not be indexed by Google, which would hurt the Financial Times, from a search engine optimization perspective. So that's why I recommend, if you want to learn about treasuries or anything uh, macroeconomic related, go to the FT and read articles that talk about macroeconomics, etc. All right. All right, next up, we've got uh, Manas, uh, who, who wrote here, uh, I'm vlogging every day now, uh, and this credit goes to you. Thanks. No, th thank you. No, no, please. Um, and, and I'm on day 830 now. I've vlogged 830 days in a row, and I'm going to do so for the rest of my life as well. Kind of like I'm going to do this weekly call every week forever, starting at 8 a.m. Uh, San Francisco time uh, as well. Yeah. All right. And Manas wrote, have you read uh, a page from my book? I know you're super busy, but I just wanted to inform you I'm making audiobooks on my book. Any suggestion? Yeah, I, I, I skimmed it. I looked at the beginning where you wrote the the nice thing about me. Thank you. I haven't had the time. So sorry. Uh, and then you wrote here, um, uh, any suggestions on audiobooks? Yeah. So w when you write a book, um, and let me give you all a template on, on how to write a book for free. Okay. So all my books are six inches by nine inches. Cost you nothing to do. Uh, and uh, I have one page of instructions, all free, which will teach you how to get it on Amazon Kindle, Amazon Print, as well as Audible. Now, Audible is acx.com. And so in order to write a book, and I want to provide this for, for all my students here for free, go to my website, which is haroonventures.com slash all lowercase, one word, write book, write book. Okay. And then what you can do here is you can download uh, the template that I use to write all of my books. All right, including um, uh, 101 Crucial Lessons. They don't teach you in business school. Okay, so this template here, all you have to do is download it, and there's one page of instructions on how to do it on Amazon Kindle, Amazon Print, and this will URL forward to the correct new link, as well as ACX.
All right. All right, we are back. Hopefully, you guys can uh, can, can see me. One, one, one second here. Hello. Test. Test. Lou, Lou, good, Lou, good. All right, um, we are back. Uh, let me know, can you, can you guys hear me talking or not? Um, thank you. Uh, and then I'll start answering questions. So I, I got the backup, we're good to go. Sorry about that. Um, sign of the times, I guess. So, so let me know if you guys can hear me. Uh, and if you can hear me, then I'll, I'll go back to answering uh, questions. Thank you. Um, Back. Uh, let me know. Can you, can you guys hear me? Lou. Okay, we're good. We're good to go. All right, ho hold on one second. Sorry. Test. Test. Okay, good. Woo! All right, guys. Thank, thanks for your patience. Come hell or high water, uh, we'll make this work. 50 cents said he wants to get rich or die trying. I'm gonna teach or die trying. I'm still alive, we're good to go. All right, great. Um, so let me let me get back on track here. Sorry about that 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 little break there, that pause, but uh, we're, we're good to go. Okay, and let me just do one more check here. Test, test, okay, good. Woo! All right, great, excellent. All right, so sorry about that, everybody. Uh, but uh, we're back, we're back. Sorry, right, hold on a second. All right, let me go back to live chat here and I'll see exactly where I was. All right. All right, give me one second, guys. All right, great. So the first one I see actually is... Um, it, you might have to repaste your questions, guys. Sorry about that. But the first one I see is is from um, uh, Daniel, who's saying, "Hey, Chris, hope you're having a great week." Likewise, uh, I was wondering how much my original science degree grade of 2.2 would hire my entry to a bulge bracket bank with one year science experience at six months at a bank uh, like uh, NT. 
um, would I still be on the back foot? And if you have uh, any tips to set myself apart with a low grade attached to my name, uh, thanks a lot, Dan. Yeah, so I, I've heard of people that have taken some night courses um, in, in finance, accounting, et cetera, um, and have gotten A's on those night courses at, at community colleges or local universities, uh, and then submitted that with their application, uh, and they worked around it, still got the gig. Yeah, so you you can do it. You can do it, but but I think a lot of it is going to come down to, uh, to, to to networking, um, and y'all know you can go to my, my website, um, and then uh, at my website haroonventures.com, you can download uh, th this book on networking, which will help out a lot. I, I humbly believe. Okay, great. All right, next question is um, uh, from. Uh, Saif, who's saying, uh, I'm a biz... And by the way, if, if I'm up to uh, the question from uh, Saif Khaled right now. Um, if your questions weren't answered before, then just paste them again, please. Sorry about the power going out, but I did find a backup, so we're good to go. So Saif is saying, uh, I'm a business uh, management um, uh, student uh, graduating. Um, and I want to follow your advice, but I feel I have no expertise in any field yet. Do you think I should go for a data science master's or get a regular job? Yeah. Uh, and then you wrote here, I'm graduating this summer and I feel lost uh, and not sure what I should do next. I really love both your, your MBA book and Udemy course. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks. So what I would say is if you have no experience, that's okay. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I would set up a bunch of informational meetings with people that work in certain career paths that are of interest to you. Um, and while you meet with them, and you can use uh, the concepts I talk about in this book to get these meetings or take my complete job course on my MBA degree program. But during those meetings, make sure that you understand what a day in the life is like uh, in that field, for example, and that it feels like something you would love doing, not just for the money, but something you would absolutely love to do. I would set up lots of inter informational meetings. Uh, and that's a great way to, to kind of find yourself or find your career path and what you want to do. So uh, w when I was uh, when I was your age, um, I remember I didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh, and so I set up a lot of informational meetings. Uh, I even went down to visit Harvard Law School. Uh, and I, I actually got meetings with lawyers because at that time I saw a lot of great John Grisham movies um, like a few or, and great uh, legal movies like um, 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 and, and like the firm, etc. Uh, and then I realized that I just don't want to be a lawyer because of those informational meetings. So just set up those informational meetings using the concepts from this book. Um, and then just talk about what a day in the life is like in those professions. And if you enjoy it, then pursue it and pursue it aggressively. And if that didn't answer your question correctly, let me know, please. All right. All right. Um, uh, Gregory is saying, hey, Chris, hey, everyone, uh, another great call. Thanks. And as you said that comment, boom, the inter uh, the uh, the power went down. But again, I, I found a backup here. So come hell or high water, I will I will teach. Yeah, and we'll have fun doing it. OK, um, so uh, Naveed is asking, um, I want to ask um, what to do if your management asks you uh, to slow down. Um, I have after looking and proving relationship advices. I have hard worked uh, in services clients even after normal office hours. Yeah, I'm trying to understand the question. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, if you can rephrase that question, um, I, I'd appreciate it so I can I can humbly answer it the right way for you. Thanks. Next up, Hamdan is saying, uh, hi, Chris, huge fan. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Um, all right, now I'm reading all your comments on, hope the power comes back up, all that stuff. Give me a second. All right, hold on. Okay. All right, now tons of people are, are okay, okay. Um, okay, great, Here, here's a question. Uh, type your questions now, please. Um, the question is from, and let me just do a, a quick check. Test, test, check. We're good. Okay. Question is from Emily who's saying, hi, Chris. Uh, I'm in your silver MBA degree program. Thank you. 
uh, and then you wrote, I, I hope you're doing well. I just want to say thank you for making the whole program. I learned much more from you than my own bachelor's degree a couple of years ago. Thank you. That, that's music to my heart. Thank you. I, I really, really appreciate that. I, I poured every little ounce of myself um, into this MBA degree programs, the silver, gold, and platinum. And that's wonderful feedback. Thank you. And thank you for taking a chance on me as well uh, with that. Thanks. Okay. All right, I'm going through the questions here. <laughs> All right, one, one sec, guys. All right, uh, next question is from Michael. Uh, Michael is saying, uh, good morning from uh, Sonoma County, Chris. Good morning to you, to you too, Michael. I hope the power didn't go down for you up there in Sonoma as it did right now. I know you guys are hit pretty hard by um, by the fires as well. and. Uh, I hope everything is, is fine with you and your family. Yeah. So good morning to you as well. And then you wrote, thanks for being here for us every week. Uh, always grateful to learn from you uh, and your incredible experience. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've made many mistakes in my career and I love teaching people based on my mistakes and my tiny successes. Next up. Hey, Chris, uh, I'm graduating uh, from a business administration and IT school next year. Uh, do you have any suggestions for me for a master's degree if I want to continue in the path of industrial management? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, since you already have uh, experience uh, from education-wise, from IT and, and business, I'd recommend I recommend working a bit first because you might not need to go and get uh, uh, an industrial management type degree. Um, what, what I would do first uh, before going down that path is I would go to LinkedIn. And I would find people that have the job that you want. Uh, and then I'd look to see what their credentials are. And I'd also set up a lot of informational meetings with people that work uh, in that sector, uh, industrial management, uh, and see if you can get a job that way. And, and you can always read my networking book, which you can get from my website, haroonventures.com, uh, which will teach you how to network and get a lot of informational meetings. Yeah. Um, next up, Michael is saying, I'm working on step 13 in my complete business plan course. Awesome. Uh, if anyone is thinking about it, I highly recommend it. Uh, Chris is uh, an amazing teacher. Thank you. And the course is incredibly comprehensive. Thank you so much for that. I, I appreciate that. Um, uh, so Michael's referring to the complete uh, business plan course. And, and we have a, a much more uh, elaborate version in the MBA degree program in the third of four semesters too. And in the third semester, I put you through what's called a venture capital boot camp, uh, as I've done a lot of work with the top venture capital firms uh, and all the name brands, um, incubation firms and VC as well. So it's a lot of fun. Thank you, Michael. God bless you. All right. Uh, next up, Selden. Thank you, Selden, for that. Appreciate what you wrote there. Thank you. I just checked your website and noticed the silver version is no longer available. We'll be coming back. Thanks and more power. Yeah. No, it is available, but my, my marketing team decided to promote uh, platinum and gold for now uh, until uh, we go live on December 14th uh, and then we'll start marketing that again but it is still there let, let me just show you um, all right let me go over here oh, I've got pedals too this might work hey I'm so excited we're, we're back we're back live man perfect I, I figured out a, a, a backdoor way to do it with a stream key as well that's nerd talk sorry and this is what I'm looking this is my, my console here guys all right but if, if you go to um, learn Actually, let me go to incognito mode. Otherwise, it won't show you everything properly. All right. If you go to uh, learn.haroonventures.com, uh, I've got my, my courses here, everything here. Um, and the third one here, here is silver, if you want to check this out. And, and for those of you uh, that aren't, uh, that want to know the difference between the silver version uh, as well as gold and platinum, well, first of all, they all have a 30-day money, money back guarantee. No questions asked. Uh, and if you sign up for the gold and platinum version we start december 14th and the money back guarantee on these programs here is 30 days after we start so you've got nothing to lose and everything's a game because you can get your money back all the way up through january 14th of 2021 and the difference between these these is that this one here has uh 300 hours uh and will have by the time that the degree is done this this december i promise you early december uh 300 hours of on demand it's like netflix but for for business streaming this also has 300 plus a couple hundred hours of live Q&A, um, which I do every class. Um, and then this one here, this platinum, has everything these, these two bad boys have. 
but you also get three hours of one-on-one -on -one meetings uh, with, with me as, as, as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if anybody has additional questions about that, please let me know. And thank you very much. All right, let me close this and get back to questions. All right. All right, next up, uh, Loving Literacy uh, is, 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 is uh, you're from Atlanta, right? I, I, remember, I remember your name. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and, and then you wrote, uh, got to get ready for a meeting, but thank you so much for everything. I'll see you next week. Uh, thank you. Uh, my, my pleasure. My pleasure. Um, and then um, uh, Naveed said, hi, Chris. Uh, what I did that my normal office hours are nine to five. Uh, and after your advice on improving relationships with clients have actually went an extra mile. Great. Um, I, I worked even after office hour finished and respond to client queries coming in um, after normal hours, uh, even at nine to 10, yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's tough when you're first getting started. I, I hate FaceTime, um, but the harsh reality is that you kind of got, you gotta show your boss you're working harder than anybody else and you know be, be philo, which is what I call it. First in, last out. It sucks, but it's, um, it's important early on, yeah. Okay, um, and Saif so said, uh, thank you so much for the answer. Uh, that was more than enough, my, my pleasure. And thanks for that, that happy emoji there too. Uh, Navid is saying, uh, when my management knows um, in terms of getting feedback from the client, which is great, they advise me to slow down in a way not to work extra hours to getting back to client after normal hours. Shall I stop this altogether? Yeah, okay, I understand your question now. Thank you for, for rephrasing it, yeah. <sighs> You remind me of, of myself a lot now when I, when I was younger too. Um, and it, some people you work with might get threatened because you're so good and you're the type of person that should probably start your own company. That's right. And if I can humbly help you to do so through my courses or my MBA degree program, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. Um, but um, yeah, I, I, it's very rare I've heard of people being told to stop working that hard. You know, I, I once had uh, a very senior executive uh, that I worked for uh, that went away on vacation for two weeks. And he told me to take care of his clients and he gave me the whole client list. Uh, and then he told me, do a good job, but not too good. <laughs> but I, I think working for yourself is the ultimate meritocracy where you, you eat what you kill and you get compensated properly. Um, and, and so if you're running into frustration in your, your career, Naveed, uh, with respect to you know, being told not to work as hard and it's your nature to want to work very hard, then I would think about either finding another job or starting your own company, maybe a company similar to the one you currently work for uh, and give them a run for their money. Okay. Uh, Maria is saying, welcome back, Chris. Thank you, Maria. It's, it's great to be back. Um, uh, and about the feedback from the job rejections, they said that they were impressed and they liked my experience, but they were going to continue with applicants with skills that better fit the job. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a tough one because wh whenever you apply for a job and you don't get it, it, it's because somebody else might have more experience or somebody else has uh, a contact within the company. Uh, and so I would say continue to network. Um, you know, there, there's, there's, there's more, there's more, opportunities out there as well and just don't let one data point become a trend for you uh, subconsciously in your mind when it comes to your experience yeah but good for you for asking for feedback and anybody that's been rejected from a company um, always call them and thank them for the time whatever because it's a great way to network and also ask them for feedback on why you did not get that job don't put it in an email because they're too scared to write it and you know what i'm getting at just call them um, don't leave a voicemail get them live keep calling and then ask them for feedback All right, and Bella wrote, hello, sir, how are you? I'm good, thank you, how are you? Um, uh, next up, Maria is saying, um, my 10 year goal is I'm a creative person and I love working in the 3D industry, very cool. Um, my, my, and I use Adobe Dimension a lot now for PowerPoint presentations, the, the 3D animations, I love that stuff. And then you wrote here, my dream goal is to be a 3D artist specialized in the environmental art um, for um, CGI companies and gaming companies. Yeah, very cool. Okay, great. So what I would say, um, I think what would be a great gig for you is to work for one of the video game studios. 
uh, from a design perspective. Now, uh, in terms of, of how to get the experience, um, I, I, would, I would take courses on the Unreal Engine and really understand how to code for those uh, development environments. I'm sure you've already, already done that. You probably run circles around me in that respect. Uh, then what I would do uh, is I would set up a lot of informational meetings using the networking skills I teach uh, with people that work for video game studios, you know, um, like Naughty Dog Studios, uh, which is the studio in Southern California that makes uh, the Uncharted franchise uh, as well as The Last of Us. Um, and, and there's lots of other studios as well. You know, if, if, if you're overseas or if you're in Canada, you know, Ubisoft has offices everywhere, like Ubisoft Montreal is where they made uh, Assassin's Creed, etc. So I would try to set up informational meetings with studios uh, that are owned by the larger companies. And so Electronic Arts, EA, which is based uh, 20 minutes south of me here in, in Redwood City, um, they have offices all over the world as well um, for, for their different franchises. So I would try to set up informational meetings, depending on where you are in the world, uh, with people that work for video game studios. Um, and, and see if you can get your foot in the door that way. And you might want to bring your laptop with you if, if you're doing it in person or do it over Zoom if you want to uh, and just show examples of your work. Uh, and what you can do also, Maria, is on your LinkedIn profile, which I'll look at in a second. I know you gave me the link here. On your LinkedIn profile and on your resume, you can provide hyperlinks um, for sample um, 3D environments you've created for video game, uh, it, it, video games, et cetera. You know, you can showcase your stuff online that way. Another thing I would say is um, to start using YouTube. Now, YouTube is the only gold rush in history where it costs you nothing to make the product. And YouTube is also the only gold rush in history where you can get access to potentially billions of customers uh, immediately for free. Um, and so what I would do is I would become a thought leader by thinking like a thought leader. And I would create videos once a week on how to create those environmental backgrounds or 3D realms, for example, uh, in, in the video games uh, stuff that you're doing and become a thought leader. Maybe even teach it on, on, on Udemy because when one teaches, two learn. Yeah. But I, I think you can also write a book uh, about that. Um, you can go to my website, haroonventures.com slash all lowercase, write book. And I give you a template on how to, for, for free, obviously, on, on how to write a book. And then what you can do is you can gut the book, meaning once a week, take a chapter and paste it on a LinkedIn. And once a week, you can repurpose that content by making YouTube videos um, as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then you asked me to take a look at your, your LinkedIn profile and, and provide feedback. Okay, sure. So I'm going to provide feedback. Um, and I'm going to pretend that I'm a recruiter uh, that, that works at um, Naughty Dog Studios. And me, the recruiter at Naughty Dog Studios, is working on creating The Last of Us Part 3 and Uncharted Part 5. And I want to see if you're a good fit. Okay, this will be fun. So let me go and share my screen over here. Give me one second. And I will check out your LinkedIn profile and I'll give you my, my, my humble feedback. All right, let's go here. And I will go to LinkedIn com slash what you gave me here we go <clears throat> okay cool all right um i like that it's artistic all right um all right so let, let me see here great welcoming picture i like it this is cool um oh i like the uh, the use of these uh, uh uh emojis here stars i've never seen anyone do that that, that will set you aside make you look, look a little bit different as well cool nice i connected with you too hope you don't mind okay um, and then we go, okay, about, hey there, I'm a 3D artist specialized in interior architecture and environmental art with six years work experience in the 3D art industry. Um, I, oh good, you do have a website. Okay, excellent. You, you, you know what I'm talking about. I created 3D environments from realistic architecture styles. What are the idea? All that good stuff. Okay, great. Okay, oh my God, you run circles around me too. Okay, and, and I do use Substance Painter as well. And it drives me nuts because it always starts in all my computers and I have no idea how to remove it. And, and I'm a techie as well. Yeah. All right, and you've got significant um, auto desk experience as well. Uh, and I met with Carol, Carol Bartz uh, and, and Carl Bass here a lot. I used to be a big shareholder. 
All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and, and check this out here, this, this website, artstation.com. Okay, so go here. Okay, cool. About, subscribe, okay. Okay, so you got your own, your own web page there. Now this is, um, that's not your website, is it? No, okay, it's just, it's a portfolio website, I got you. Okay, cool. Okay, there we go. And you've got another website as well. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. I like this, yeah. So I would actually list both these links there. Um, and I'd probably put, um, let me see here. We go back here. Oh, it, oh, it's actually the same thing here. Okay, so I would list this, this one, that's fine, yeah. This is good, this is good. I It's very rare I see somebody put this sort of thing up here. Oh, I love it, I love it. Okay, let me look here. Very cool, I love it, I love it. That's amazing, you designed all this. Very cool. And then you've, um, what I would also do is, um, I would probably find a way to put videos here as well, to really show not just the three D two dimensional side of it, um, but but the actual videos as well, right? And you you can you can easily just create a video to, to do that uh, is as well. So that's that's what I'd recommend. And if I download this, I think it's it's an image, right? So it's JPEG. Okay, I gotcha. It looks great. Yeah, because you're interested in in, in three D, I would also show three D uh, rendered videos uh, as well uh, of 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 your work. That's just what I what I humbly recommend. Uh, let me go back here to see if there's anything else uh, I want to say here. Portfolio, okay, prints, about, cool. Like, oh, let me go here. I would also find a way maybe on your LinkedIn profile, Maria, to say that you're happy to, to work remotely as, as well. Um, just given the fact that being in the office is really, really tough these days. All right, those are your likes, followers, challenges, nothing there. Okay, cool. So that's right, I recommend. Maybe something a little bit more interactive with, with video, uh, video as well to show it, if you want to. And if I'm completely misreading, uh, what you want to do, let, let me know. I just see these, these are awesome two-dimensional images, but I think like a 3D uh, video would be kind of cool as well. Yeah. Um, and then what I would also do is, um, looks like you you comment a bunch. Let me see if you write any articles here yet. Let me just zoom out a bit here, get some more real estate. Yeah, I, I would start, um, Maria, I, I'd start writing articles um, as well and showcase your, your, your work this way. And maybe, no, you haven't written any articles yet. And no, um, see posts. Okay. Okay. You, you are. Okay. It's so funny. I mentioned Ubisoft, uh, Montreal. This is Ubisoft Toronto here, right? Yeah. yeah. And I remember Microsoft bought soft image, uh, in, in Quebec, which is, um, pretty cool video game company that they didn't do anything with. with. Yeah. Autodesk Maya. Very cool. Yeah, what I would do is I'd create your own um, your own articles here, uh, post articles, same thing. Um, that, that's that's what I, I recommend, um, just to showcase your your designs. Yeah, that's yeah, I, I'd probably be a, a great next step. Let me go back now and, and see if there's um, any other value I can add here before moving on. Test test. Okay. Good. And I would, um, because you started this with the letter I, or the word I, I would, I would write, yeah, um, something a little bit more team-based focused here. That's what I would do. Just because, whatever. It's cool with me, but some people might read it the wrong way. Um, okay. Looks good. Okay. And you already put a Udemy course there. I, I would put some of uh, uh, Tristan's stuff here as well. You, you probably know Tristan from Udemy. He's a good guy, British dude. Um, uh, like the Unreal Engine stuff as well. Um, I would get uh, more recommendations as well. I would get at, at least five to 10. Um, that's what I recommend, yeah. And let me see here if there's any, I don't, want, I don't want you to follow any politicians. That's why I'm looking through here. Oh, Rockstar Games. Dude, I'm still playing GTA 5. I, I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, 
Let me see what else here. I'm just looking for red flags, that's all. Because uh, if you follow politicians, half the people won't like you as much or vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, for first glance, it looks pretty cool. Um, I, I think you have a good profile. I, I would just maybe show something a little bit more uh, interactive uh, as well. Um, and, I, and I also start writing a lot more articles so that you can be a thought leader. And, and Maria, maybe you can, I don't know, maybe write, write a book using the template I told you about earlier uh, to create, um, you know, on, on, on how to be a 3D artist, et cetera, that, that sort of thing. And then you can get the book uh, by copying and pasting uh, one chapter each week on LinkedIn uh, so you can be a thought leader. But there's no reason you can't create YouTube videos every week uh, as well. And, and for more details on, on how to use YouTube and all the camera stuff, whatever, um, you can go to, go to my website if, if you want to, which is um, haruneducation.com. Um, and then go to my courses here. Maybe take the, the, the complete uh, YouTube course. Uh, but I, I, think your, I think your profile is good. I think it's excellent, actually. Um, what, what I recommend now is opining a lot, give your opinion, become a thought leader, write a lot as well, and make YouTube videos as well. Um, because we're going to look back you know, years from now, decades from now, and say, oh my goodness, this was the golden age of YouTube content. I wish I had created more. Um, that's what I recommend. Uh, and if you do that as well, if you help other people, um, it, it's karma or, or karma synchronicity, call it what you will. Um, you know, people will, will look to you as the thought leader. You know, the media will come to you and ask you for quotes, whatever it is as well. Um, and the way to become a thought leader is to think like a thought leader and to write and write often and repurpose content. And one more thing I want to show you, uh, uh, Maria, before moving on, when it comes to being a thought leader, um, what I want you to do, uh, there's this guy named Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary V is what people call him. Um, and he's a bit abrasive, but you grow to love him because he's transparent. Go to his website. And this is something I do. No one else mentioned this to me, but go to the very bottom. Okay. Um, and then uh, you'll see on the bottom. And let me get rid of my face here so you can see what I'm pointing out, pointing out to y'all. You can see here these social media um, platforms. And I want you to be, I want you to use these ones in this order, okay? Because he, he, he's better than I am and I will ever be. He's got nine, a staff of 900, I don't. Uh, but he has, does Instagram first, then YouTube, Facebook, um, uh, Twitter. Uh, I haven't figured out Snapchat. Uh, he's got LinkedIn uh, and then he's got podcasts as, as well. Uh, and, and what he does actually um, is he teaches you how to repurpose content through what he calls 86 pages of insanity. And what this is, is basically 86 simple slides to go through, which will teach you about the content pyramid, right? And he's talking about repurposing content. And since you're in the video, video game industry, you're going to love my analogy I'm going to give you right now when it comes to repurposing content. Um, so um, if, if Nintendo has been repurposing content for decades. So, you know, they, they recently did it with uh, Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Um, which basically is repackaging and repurposing of content they created years ago. Uh, included, uh, um, you know, Mario 64 uh, from 1996, uh, Mario Sunshine from 02, uh, as well as Galaxy 1 from 07, although Galaxy 2 is better. But they repurpose that content. Um, and that's one of the reasons why Nintendo is so profitable. And of course, they do the same thing as well with the 8-bit and 16-bit console games. Uh, you've seen them all repurposed online a lot. Uh, on, on the Switch store, et cetera. Um, and so think of it that way. Use Nintendo as kind of a role model uh, in terms of creating content and repurposing it. Um, so you can work smarter, not harder. So you might be able to, you might write a book and go to haroonventures.com slash write book, all lowercase, in order to get this template. Write a book uh, and then repurpose it like Nintendo does by release, by taking one chapter of this each week and gutting it and pasting it into, into LinkedIn. Um, and what you can also do is um, you can repurpose the content of your book, for example, uh, by also creating a YouTube video every week based on one chapter from your book. Um, and there's got to be a carrot as well um, in order to build up your own business. And I could talk about landing pages and all that other stuff if you want me to uh, as, as well. But I would say just get started by thinking like a thought leader and opining a lot 
um, so that um, you you can turn your your hero uh, Miyamoto-san, your idol, into your rival. Why not? Eh? All right. Let me go to the next next question here. And thank you all for your patience today regarding the the power outage earlier today. All right. Um, give me one second, please. All right, next up is Joao. Hey, Joao. Joao wrote, Hi, Chris. Uh, for the NBA starting on the 14th of December, do you hold an orientation session prior to the official start of the classes? No, no. We, we just start on December 14th. You don't need to prepare at all. At all. Yeah. And, and you'll love it or your money back. Next up is Shub, who's saying, I'm 16 currently. I'm looking to go to an economics university, then investment banking for two years, and finally hedge funds. I'm looking to get into a target school. Uh, what should I do right now uh, to set me up uh, for the future? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and by the way, just all that stuff you mentioned, you know, hedge funds, uh, investment banking, uh, et cetera, um, um, just make sure it's something you thoroughly enjoy um, because if you just do it for, for the money, um, you know, you'll you'll be unhappy. And, and it's interesting. I used to work on Wall Street and I worked at Goldman Sachs and every Christmas bonus season, everyone was depressed because we all compared ourselves to those that made more than us. That's the cancer of Wall Street and finance in general. And then I read a book, um, which I humbly recommend you read, um, called The Art of Happiness by the Dalai Lama. And the Dalai Lama said that the problem with Western society is we sacrifice our health, our entire lives, in order to make money. And at the end of our lives, we sacrifice uh, our, we um, sacrifice all of our money to maintain our health. And then we look back and we realize we never really lived to begin with. So make sure that you're going into the, the, the banking sector and the hedge fund sector and economics in general because it's something you thoroughly enjoy. Yeah. Now, in terms of how to get there and get into a, a target school, so to speak. Um, so, you know, grades are important, of course. Um, and if your grades aren't that great, then if you have to write an aptitude test like the SAT, which I don't think should be around, and they're starting to phase it out, by the way, awesome. Um, then you can study hard for that. And it's not an intelligence test. That's right. It's how hard you study for it. Um, and there's a lot of great test prep services like Kaplan, et cetera. Then when it comes to your application, the, the essay is incredibly important. So I want you to think uh, like the admissions body does, uh, the admissions committee. And try to do something radically different that they've never seen before on an application. Um, and, and, and think about it in terms of how do you help diversify based on your skill sets? How do you help to diversify and enhance the student body uh, as well? Do something radically different, like start a company or a charity or something. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, next up, hey, Christina, how are you? Uh, Christina is, um, uh, she and her, her husband are, are joining, right? Our, our platinum program uh, in, in December. Thank you. Thank you. She's incredibly well-spoken. She's lived in New York. She now lives in the biotech capital of the planet in South San Francisco. She is wicked smart uh, and nice as well. Yeah. And you, you have a daughter as well. And I, and I remember it was on our um, open house back in October uh, on that Friday call, which went more than 12 hours. Um, you brought your daughter on. It was really nice to, to, to meet her as well. And a lot of people brought their kids on. It was kind of fun. It's nice. We have a nice family here. Uh, so Christina wrote, good morning, Chris. I hope you and the and Haroon Education Ventures family uh, have an outstanding week. Uh, likewise, likewise. Um, it, my power went down earlier today. Let me know if yours went down as well. I know you're not, not that far away, away from me. Um, uh, and then you wrote, uh, looking forward to taking uh, your master class on the 27th. Uh, and Christian and I, your husband, yeah, uh, can't wait to start Platinum uh, on December the 14th. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, it, it should be fun. And I, and I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, I hope you enjoy it. And in terms of the, um, let me actually go and, and change this slide over here. Yeah. So, um, and what I'm going to do, uh, give me one second, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm going to show you behind the scenes here as I make one little change as all my equipment just rebooted, as y'all know. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna stop this here and get this out of the way. And I'll take this 
stuff here, my, my propaganda. <laughs> and I'll put it up higher here. That, that should be good. All right, and let me go to play the presentation. There we go, good, yeah, yeah. So you should be able to, to, to get the, the information there. If anybody's interested in joining, uh, the, um, uh, the 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 open or the master class on the 27th uh, of, of November and we're giving away a couple of, um, of scholarships as well it, it'll be fun and, and there are the details right there behind me thanks okay um, give me one second guys I had a technical issue this morning I need to check in now go back here there we go yay all right, uh, and Navita is saying, uh, hi, Chris, thanks. It's hard to start a company because competitors in my current company uh, and it's one of the largest U.S. investment banks. Oh, dude, yeah. Um, and I have to be honest with you, when I, when I was reading your answer for a, a split second there, um, I just saw the TV show called um, Industry, um, the first episode, which is about an investment bank in England. And there's one dude that worked himself way too hard. Um, you know what, dude? Maybe the people you're working with are worried about your your health as well, um, just in terms of taking time off. Um, watch that episode. It, it's TV, so it's extreme, but I read between the lines. Um, and I say it because I, I say it with love in my heart as always. Uh, but you got to take your breaks. Yeah, Make sure you take off at least one day a week. At least one day a week. Yeah. Uh, and then schedule each day as well. And I teach you how to do that in my MBA degree program too. Um, schedule each day, schedule in time for exercise uh, as well. Because I've had, I've had buddies that have worked, you know, a couple of years in investment banking. And, and after that, they look just awful, you know. Uh, and in terms of money, um, you know, they make less per hour uh, than many of us do because they work insane hours. All right, um, but there's no reason why you can't start an investment bank one day and, and give them a run for their money. Yeah, or maybe I'll hire you to work for Morgan Haroon Sachs. Just kidding, it's a pretend company. All right, uh, and then Selden is saying, hey Chris, uh, aside from the live Q&A and the one-on-one -on -one sessions for the MBA degree programs, are there other differences between the three types of HBS uh, MBA courses, specifically uh, content uh, and, and lecture-wise? Yeah. Um, no, it's, it, it's, it's, so it's, they're all pretty similar. Um, silver, all you do is you get just the videos online. It's like Netflix, like streaming, um, with, with gold, you get that plus a couple hundred hours of live one-on-ones or live uh, Q and A, I should say, like using zoom as well. Um, no, not just typing in uh, questions and stuff. Um, and then there's also, oh, something else I forgot to mention. There's for MBA students only office hours as well. And so this week, um, my platinum uh, students and gold students have their um, office hours at 11.15 a.m. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're good. We have time still, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and there's a lot better networking opportunities as well if you're in the gold or platinum version. Yeah. And we use Slack and other stuff as well. Yeah. Um, and then Maria is saying, uh, oof, I would love to work for Naughty Dog. Uh, I'm in the Netherlands, but there are gaming studios here as well. Awesome. Okay. Uh, and then you wrote, uh, I was thinking of Twitch streaming, actually. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah. And I, I teach about that in my uh, in the MBA degree program. I, I teach you how to use um, Wirecast, which is what I'm using now. Uh, I teach you how to use um, uh, OBS, Open Broadcasting Software, which is free to use. T I also teach you how to use Streamlabs. And, and I also do Twitch in one of the classes as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Maria wrote here, um, uh, great advice, thank you. You're, you're, you're most welcome, most welcome, yeah. Um, uh, and, and we actually have um, uh, Asamina, uh, who she won the, uh, I had a contest and she won uh, a random draw at the open house. Um, she's from Greece. Uh, she won, she got the platinum full ride scholarship, the $1,500 version. Uh, and she's also uh, creating an amazing video game. Um, cool. Uh, maybe you can talk to her about, about Rage as well, which I think is the engine for, uh, for, for, for Grand Theft Auto and Take-Two uh, developed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and then you wrote, uh, this is great advice. I'm taking notes. Thank you. And your, your website was great. I love it. And your LinkedIn profile is great as well. I would just add more recommendations. Uh, and I'd also start to, um, think like a thought leader and post more articles there as well. 
Uh, next up, Alan is saying, um, what are you doing? Uh, what, Chris, what you're doing for Maria is very cool. Uh, you're really the best teacher ever. No, no, thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. This is fun. Okay. Um, and then Maria wrote, you should try Red Dead Redemption if you like GTA 5. I, I, dude, I'm, I'm far into it. I, I did part one. Uh, part one I did back in 2012, my old house. And my wife saw it. And she was like, oh, my God, is that, are you watching a Western movie? I'm like, no, this is like a video game. And then part two I I, I did um, as well. I, I did about 30% of it. And I absolutely loved it. I loved everything about it. I mean, the, the, the story was amazing as well. And that's one thing that that Naughty Dog has really figured out. Um, it's not easy to make video games with great character development. Otherwise, LucasArts would would have created successful Indiana Jones franchises. They haven't. Um, but but I absolutely love Red Dead 2. Um, I do feel like I'm in America in, in 1899, so it's like a history lesson too. Um, I'm enjoying it. Thoroughly enjoying it, yeah. Except one of my kids signed on to my profile uh, on my PlayStation, and he... Uh, he finished most of it. And so I'm like, damn it, how do I go back to where I was? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, and then Maria is saying, uh, uh, Chris, thank you so much for the great advice. I will take it to heart. Awesome. Awesome. And if I can, if you want to make more changes and, and ask me, you know, in future webcasts or in any of my programs or courses, I'm, I'm here for you always. Yeah. Uh, Alan wrote, uh, hi, Chris. Uh, hey, Alan. My daughter is 11 years old. How old should she be before I can enroll her uh, in your MBA program? Thank you. Uh, it, it, as young as you want. Like, I, I try to make it fun. Um, like, there's a there's one lesson where, oh, my God, you're going to love this. Oh, Maria, you'll love this, too. So I use Super Mario Maker, um, and we do a great case study on Apple, potentially buying Nintendo, which is a lot of fun. Uh, but there's one class, which was three hours long, um, where I, de I designed um, a bunch of Mario levels. Uh, in Super Mario Maker 2. And I teach based on me playing it. Uh, and it's all block letters, you know, the bricks, right? Like barriers to entry or target market or whatever it is. It's, it's a lot of fun. And of course, we study Nintendo uh, at length uh, w with that. Um, what I also did in another class was um, I used SimCity, the most recent one, uh, the well, the last one from 2013 before Maxis and Electronic Arts destroyed the franchise. I used that to explain, you know, how bonds work uh, as well and fixed income, uh, which, which was fun, which is fun. And I even brought in Clash of Clans at one point and I still play with my kids. Okay. My kids got me into it and it was a way for me to bond with them. And now I still play it every single day. Okay. Builder base level 10, yo, or no, no. builder base. I think so. I can't remember. My, my kids are better than I am, but I talked about barriers to entry, um, uh, by, by looking at the city walls and gems or resources and building a business, meaning an army and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, 11 might be a bit, a bit young. Um, you can have her watch it with you for free. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or if she's interested, she can do it, but it's got to come from within. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of like, um, like one of my kids loves to exercise a lot. Uh, and that's, that's nature, not nurture. Right. So that's just him wanting to look better. That sort of thing. It's got to come from within. You know, they, um, they, they've got to enjoy doing it. And what you can do, Alan, is, is have your daughter watch the first couple lessons if you want. Um, if you go to learn.haroonventures.com, um, there's a couple free lectures there uh, you, you can check out, um, including Breaking News, which is the third lecture in the MBA program, which is funny and might crack her up a bit. Yeah. Uh, or you can have her sign up and then ask for the money back, you know, within 30 days if, if she doesn't enjoy it yeah okay um uh, and that rishab is saying do all innovative ideas really work uh what should be the quality in that idea for for a better business yeah so i i say that um ideas are commodities but execution is not um so and 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 that's why whenever i uh invest in startups and I, I teach my students on how to start your own companies and how to articulate and sell yourself to raise money. You know, don't don't spend a lot too much time pitching your business model because the quality of the management team is much, much better. And um, we as venture capitalists and investors, we, we know that your business model and the industry is going to change a lot in the long run. 
Um, but can you still get us excited, us investors, hypothetically speaking, excited about the business, about the prospects of the business as well? Uh, and, and the best entrepreneurs uh, and the best CEOs are all salespeople. That's how they got to where they are. Uh, and in my MBA degree program, I'll teach you how to sell as well. Yeah. And present and all, all that great stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, next, next up, um, uh, Shub is saying, uh, yeah, it definitely is something I enjoy, or at least I think I do. Okay. Um, I, I've been trading in the financial markets for the past three years. Uh, and then you wrote cliche, I know. And in general, I love investing in macroeconomics, et cetera. Very cool. Very cool. Make sure in your investment banking meetings that you don't mention that you're, you're a trader. Make sure that you, you mention that you're a fundamental long-term investor. And you can take my uh, complete financial analyst training course. And in that course, actually, this will, actually, this course will help you a lot, I think, humbly. Uh, in, in this course, I, I actually teach you um, and, and I have you rotate through my investment bank, a pretend investment bank called Morgan Haroon, Morgan Haroon Sachs. Um, and give me one second, and I'll give you just a, a really, really quick overview of that. Um, so uh, stay, stay with me here, please. I want to actually play the video for you quickly, and then I'll answer a couple more questions, that, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up here. But I, I think you'll, you'll, you'll get a kick out of this. Where is it here? Over here somewhere. Oh, goodness, I have a lot going on. Here it is here. All right. So check this out, and, and, and while you're, you're, you're checking this out here, um, I'll be right back. Thanks. Welcome to MHS. Congratulations! MHS stands for Morgan Haroon Sachs, which is the world's number one pretend finance company. Come with me. You will go through our Financial Analyst Training Program Bootcamp. Here you will learn a lot about finance and investing with no theory. You will rotate through the many divisions of our firm and we will discuss how to excel in 14 different financial analyst roles. I will also help you understand which finance role you're most passionate about and how to get hired and promoted in the industry. You will deal with the employees and clients of our firm in edutaining, meaning entertaining and educational interactive case studies, including how an IPO works, how to manage risk and how to manage a portfolio. You will create incredible investment research reports that will impress the heck out of anyone in the finance industry. This course is for anyone who wants to be a financial analyst or a better investor, stock picker, portfolio manager, and more. No prior experience is necessary. It includes a comprehensive Excel template to help guide you through our training program. In addition, I will teach you Excel skills so you can model financial statements and value companies from scratch. This course is based on my many years of experience. I'm an MBA graduate from Columbia University. I've gone through the Global New Hire Financial Analyst Training Program at Goldman Sachs in New York, London, and Tokyo. I've worked for top hedge funds, and I even started my own hedge fund and venture capital firms. This course is more than 22 hours long. This is the most thorough financial analyst and investing course available on the market. The student reviews have been amazing. Welcome to the Morgan Rune Sachs training program. This will be a lot of fun. I'll see you in the morning. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I, I, I filmed that actually, or I hired up my production crew. Uh, in, in the Czech Republic for that in Prague, and I, I was sick. Like I'm, I'm a hypocrite, um, uh, and because Navid, I think it was you, I was telling you to take your breaks. Uh, I worked myself so hard, I lost my voice, and so I had to dub over all the words in post production. But we'll give you a taste of what the course is all about, which is fun. Yeah, uh, and Navid is saying I would love to attend uh, master your master class. Uh, here, the details are, are here. Yeah. Uh, and, and I, and I wish to get a chance to, for the MBA scholarship. Well, sign up and yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. You register there. Uh, and Ashutosh is saying, hi, Chris. Uh, I was a learner on your course on Udemy. Uh, I've been able to connect with a few people from companies of my choice. How do I go ahead and seek an interview? Yeah. So what I would do is, um, if, if you take my complete job course, I talk about networking there. And then I talk about, uh, once you get your foot in the door, you know, what to talk about, 
because relationships are more important than product knowledge. Uh, and then add value. And I teach you how to add value to them to enhance their career. And then once you do that, then you go in for the ask uh, and you ask, are there opportunities for me? Um, and it's my complete job course is it's way over 10 hours. So there's a lot to it. Uh, but I explain in a lot more detail there. And just understand going in that people are motivated by three things in business. Number one, they want to make more money. Number two, they want to get promoted faster. And number three, they want to enjoy what they do. And so I arm you with a bunch of weapons for your arsenal, templates to bring, etc., uh, that will help you to add value to one, two, or three of those respects, uh, th those characteristics. Last thing I'll say quickly is before any informational meeting or interview, always go to their Twitter profile to see who they follow so that you can bond with them about something cool. All right, um, and then I'm gonna have to wrap this up in a second, guys, because I've got um, MBA office hours for my gold and platinum students. Um, all right, um, next up, uh, Steve is saying, hi, Chris, thanks for this amazing session at Q&A. You're, you're most welcome, thank you. Uh, and thanks for your patience today. I, the power went down earlier today, uh, but we got a work around, thank goodness, yeah. Yeah, and Naveed said, uh, Chris, I'd love to work for you for, for free. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. And I do hire my, my, my students occasionally too. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, we're not hiring right now, though, but yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, Steve is saying, please, I wanna know what's the difference between the free MBA you shared for free some time ago uh, and the one you're offering now. Yeah, yeah. So what, what Steve is referring to was uh, back during the month of March uh, of, of this year, um, uh, given COVID, uh, my, my revenue the amount of money I make went up a lot and I felt really, really guilty that I was making money from this. Uh, and so what I did uh, was um, I, I gave away, I sent out one LinkedIn announcement um, where I was giving away all of my courses for free for three days. And based on that one announcement, I had over a million students sign up. Uh, it, it was crazy. Then I had to hire a lot of people and I'm glad I did to help out with the Q&A and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that was just those three days. And I also felt guilty uh, in the month of March um, uh, for my, my MBA degree students and my platinum and gold program. Uh, and so what I did was I emailed all of them. A lot of them were, some of them were still making payments, whatever. And we had a payment plan then we don't anymore. Um, and, and I said, I don't want your money. You all get it for free. Yeah. So that's when you saw that free course. And that was an eight hour course of mine called an entire MBA in one course, which, um, it sold a, a couple hundred thousand copies. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I'm in the process now of making a French version of that one. Uh, with Vital, one of my amazing students um, who was born in Rwanda. And the proceeds are going uh, to build schools uh, in, in Magu, which is his hometown in, in Rwanda, uh, which should be fun. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. I, I'm so sorry. I, I see if there's, there are more questions. I, I do have to wrap it up um, as I have to get to my um, for MBA students only uh, office hours for, for students in the, the gold and, and platinum program. Um, so within 24 hours, uh, this call... Uh, if of this of, uh, within 24 hours, you can go to the description field of this call, um, and my team will put together a list of all questions asked. So you can get immediate access by clicking on all the questions. Um, if you follow me on YouTube, if you subscribe to my channel, I'll see you tomorrow and every day as I vlog. Uh, every day my vlogs drop yo <laughs> at 9 a.m. Uh, San Francisco time uh, every single day. Um, if not, God bless you all. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, um, and I'll see you next Thursday and every Thursday forever starting at 8 a.m. Uh, San Francisco time. Thank you.